Okay, I think I'm good to go. Um, sure, I'll find out if I've missed something at some point. Welcome onto the stream, everyone. Uh, who have we got here? We've got um, Mr. G, Stackbot, C64 Mark, Andy Magic Knight. Oh, request already. Okay, no problem. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, steps as well. Using all these shimmy shillings straight away. Uh, Welsh boy, welcome along, Welsh boy. I'm glad you're uh, you're joining in on the uh, on the Commodore stuff. Um, but yeah, Commodore 64 basic is absolutely terrible. So I, you'll probably want to move on from it very quick. Um, Crazy UK, welcome. Casiris, welcome. Cop 45, welcome. But yeah, July the fourth, um, which actually has fairly significant meaning for us this year because it's the first time the pubs have been open for for about three years uh, for three months three years for three months so um i'm fully expecting there to be drunken hordes outside at some point um cool right let's deal with this this request first um let me just grab up my request manager some pine hot tunes oh okay so it's just some general requests let's have a look Um, all right, let's go and look for him in the in the list. It's going to be in here somewhere. Uh, there's a musicians list. Mm -hmm. Happy July the fourth to all you Americans supporting, uh, celebrating that today. <coughs> it does feel like it is, yeah. Okay, let's give them a shuffle. All right, so this can be our, our, our back backing tracks for tonight. Then, good good suggestion. I don't know. I don't know this uh, Sid artist specifically, but um, we'll we'll just go through. We'll just go through the list in a random. So there we go. Camera's a bit high. Okay, let me. Get my ugly mug on the on the screen. Here in Scotland, I'm shocked we have not gone mad with the pubs being closed. Yeah, yeah. I do kind of wonder how some people have dealt with it. I mean, it's for some people, it's kind of a, a daily ritual, isn't it? And for others, it's a weekend ritual. So to suddenly have that taken away, it's been kind of weird, I imagine. So what I've done tonight, um, and you may notice this, uh, is I have um, set audio ducking up on the music so that it you, the music can stay fairly loud but where, when I'm not talking but when I'm talking the music goes down let me know if it's too aggressive I can change the settings on it um, let me know if the music is too loud overall um, I just wanted to try something out tonight um, tonight's wine is we're starting with a Marks and Spencer's French wine. I have no idea, good, no idea if it's good or not. Music should just stay constant. Okay. So the immediate opinion is that it's kind of um, the immediate opinion is it's probably not great at the audio docking. So let me let me make it less aggressive. Uh, oh god, I don't know how to do this now. Maybe like that. Oh, haze. The music is much louder than it normally is. I swear you just troll me every time. <laughs> Alright, I'm, I'm just going to turn the ducking off then. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna disable it. Okay, so that's disabled completely now, and I'm, I'm I am gonna have to drop the volume slightly there now. Right. <laughs> um, and welcome along, Hayes. Sorry, to, to the first thing I say to you is, oh, stop it, Hayes. 
Uh, all right, so this is French wine, um, which I'm not a huge fan of, but let's give it a try anyway. God, you see, I can tell straight away. It's too many flavours in it. There's literally no music. I don't know why you don't get it. It's always you that doesn't seem to get it. What 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 are you listening on, by the way? Are you on headphones? Uh, computer speakers? What does it say? It says this is... It's got a taste of peach and buttered toast. I very much doubt that. And it goes with quiche and fish cakes. Well, I'm not eating either of those, so... Let's see. There's no peach or fish cakes, a peach or butter toast in that. See, I can crank the music up, but the problem is, is if I start cranking the music up, then then it starts cutting into my voice as well. So. That's much louder, but now it's probably going to affect the volume of my voice as well. Uh, put the docking back on. <laughs> God's sake. Alright, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to spend too long doing this, because... Okay, so ducking is basically setting this value here. I'm attaching it to my microphone. So let's get a tune going. So the music should be a lot louder when I'm not talking. Well, my microphone seems to be picking stuff up now for some reason. Let's keep that there. Okay. I'll try like that for a bit. If it's too much, then I'll, I'll turn it off. Yeah, the ducking definitely works. I'm just wondering if it's if it's actually helping or if it's making it making it worse or not. I did try looking into setting up a shoutcast server um, and having having the music running from a shoutcast server embedded in the in the page, but I couldn't get it to work properly. Um, but we 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 shall see if it if it's. If it becomes annoying, let me know and we'll, we'll change it around. Good. Right, okay. So what I wanted to do tonight was look at um, space optimization in the game. It's the last thing we started doing um, just before the end last time. Um, so if you go into your, uh, into your audio that you want to duck, um, then in fact I can show you very quickly on here so it's uh, mine's desktop audio here um, so what I do is I click on this go to filters add a compressor uh, and then set your ducking source so you set your microphone to that and then just change the ratios about a little bit so a higher ratio will cut the sound out more a lower ratio will cut it out less and you need a higher release you need a release of around about 350 just so that the, the sound comes in more gradually and not straight away. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you if you stop just Google ducking in in OBS and yeah, I spent a lot of time messing around with with the audio to see if I could find a better way of doing it. So. Okay, so what I wanted to try and do is try and free up some room. Um, we save some some uh, space for music. 
looking at this we've saved about uh, just over five and a half K um, but I want to just ensure that we can save as much as possible here thanks Hayes thanks for the, thanks for the uh, host yeah RTX audio is pretty good I mean again like I say I've, I've got two fans on in here and my aircon and my microphone is only active when I'm speaking and I don't think you can hear it which is which is pretty neat and it gets rid of all the desk banging as well which is nice Hazemaker 64 has requested a sit tune <laughs> yeah I turned off the uh I turned off the crazy text to speech so unless that's actually uh, oh, you request text to speech. <laughs> no, I reject that. Okay, so what I want to do is try and free up some more rooms. So the reason we need more rooms is because we're going to need behaviors um, for the enemies. And the behaviors need to fit between the end of this bit here and here. And we can see at the moment there's only about one kilobyte to do that. That's not a lot, so. Hey Microsoft, welcome to the stream dude. Um, annoyingly, I, I did try and set up a browser source in in, um, in OBS for my little uh, re reward request overlay. And the problem is, is I've got that working now because there's an interact functionality. I was supposed to... okay. Um, but... You can't um, you can't play text to speech through that browser, so I've got to just make sure I go back to the original tunes as well because I do want to play that all those tunes that sound quite good. Um, God, I can never remember who did the original one. Not David Whittaker. No bit structural maybe. Not. Okay, not that original, but... Um, okay, so I think where we'd left off last time... Um, what were we doing? Oh, we were trying to adjust the, uh, the software sprites. Yeah, it is. It's, it's nice. I can change it though. Okay, so I was looking at the software sprites, that's what I was going to do. Thanks for the follow, Cosirus. Cosirus. Appreciated, dude. Okay, so what I was looking at, originally I was looking at just kind of only doing half of the frames in a particular way. Where is the list? Where did I generate? What did I generate here? I think they are generated here. I don't know why I'm not seeing the a table that I'm specifically looking forward to because it seems to be there so sprites create sprite glitter table Oh no, it's not the soft sprites, it's the absorb frames. It's the sprite wall, that's what I'm looking 
Yeah, this is it. Um... So, the, the original code, this code here, generates eight separate sprites. Um, in fact, I think we can, we can just export them from Vice and have a look. Yeah, I remember where we were. On. Wait for it to crash. typing from the back of a magazine. No, no. Although it looks like it with these, right? These were the sort of things you would see in the back of a magazine. So you can see it here. Uh, it's generating eight sprites for each enemy absorbed in each direction. Um, so this, let's click on it here. You can see the animations. Let's enable the animation system. And I'll go and pick a, pick a sprite. That's too loud now. <laughs> okay, so let's look at the jet. Let's set the colors so we can actually see something beautiful. Um, it's a brown color, and I think that is a pink color. There you go. So these are how the absorb frames work, basically. Depending on which way you absorb uh, the enemy. So if you're absorbing left, you use the left hand animation. If you're absorbing to the right, you use the right hand animation. So we can't just use one of these. We need two copies. We need this kind of mirrored copy that we've got. Um, and this is generated just by, it generates the first one and then it just mirrors the second, mirrors into the second one. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what I'm, what I'm thinking is if we, so the reason why this is a problem is this is, this is the memory that we've got at the moment. Um, spare. Uh, it's actually kind of nice seeing it like this because get this set in a way we can actually see it. There we go. So this is where the code currently ends. This is the, the amount of space we've got left for code. This is where all the behaviors need to go. This is the, the current music and this is the space that we've got left over in the music. It goes up to about here. Um, what we need to do is try and expand this music space a little bit but as we do that it's going to eat into our behavior space and currently we've only got two very simple behaviors in so we want we want to add a lot more in. um likewise we also need to make sure we've got enough room for all the enemies so at the moment this will only give us a, enough room for eight different enemies um which i don't think is enough um considering We've, I think we've already got eight enemies designed. We've definitely got room for, for some more. Really don't like French wine, I'm sorry. I really don't. Cryo7, welcome to the stream. 
you can tell this isn't a good wine because there, there isn't really an, a description of where it's from or anything. It just says roughly where it's from. And nothing else. It doesn't... It's, it's quite basic. But being Marks and Spencers, they can charge a fortune for it. All right, let's go back. Um, oh, I thought it was going to remember where I was in the in the list, but apparently not. Okay, so I have to go and do that again. Fine. So what I'm thinking of doing is reducing that um, that frame animation down to six or or even four. It happens so quickly. It's not really going to matter that much. Um, I think if we were to just take out um, alternate frames here, which I'll do in a second. Let me just get this music going again. Uh, I think it will look all right. Now, the problem is, is we, we generate these frames um, in code. We, these, aren't, these aren't drawn. These are generated in, in code. So... We need to make sure um, that if we change it, that the code, the new code works, obviously. <coughs> have 16 minutes to copy the active eight from RAM. So yeah, that's, that's one solution that we could do. Um, the problem with that is we still would only, if we used all, if we used eight enemies on a level, we'd still only have the same amount of code space here. And what I'm trying to do is expand this space here. Um, the other problem with that is it limits us to using only eight enemies for a level. So I'm thinking 12 enemies um, is more than enough for the entire game. Um, and basically 12 enemies would give us two more rows in here. Uh, thanks for the host, thank you. Which should give us um, should give us plenty of uh, plenty of extra space for code. In fact, it would give us uh, what is this? So this is each one of these rows is one kilobyte, I think. Um, so it would give us an extra two kilobytes for code, um, which we could share a little bit with the um, with the music. Um, we could even reduce that down to ten enemies, which would still be enough. Um, and it would give us a little bit more. Um, and the other problem is, is if we if we just copy the active ones into memory, it changes the the whole way that the code works for these. We'd have to keep a, a special lookup table for those, which wouldn't be a problem. Uh, it's just some additional stuff I don't really want to mess with if I can help it. I'm glad I'm drinking this one first. I've got a bottle of the Ned. New Zealand Chardonnay for after this. Ah, uh, good evening, Mr. Jacob. And thanks for the follow word. Appreciate it, dude. <laughs> Dogs and cats. So let's let's see if we can figure out how to do it. So first of all, I just want to see if the if changing that animation uh, down to a four frame animation would would make any huge visual impact. So I'm just going to copy this animation onto the next row. Down there, and then I'm just going to delete alternate. Uh, that, delete that one. And then I'm going to put that into there, and then I'm going to increase its timer. There we go. Right, so. So the top one is the 8 frame version, the bottom one is the 4 frame version. And yes, it does look a lot smoother, the top one, but it's really not that big a difference. I think it's probably acceptable. Yeah, I think that's probably all right. So let, let's have a go at trying to get that to work. So it's probably going to take me all freaking stream to do this, but whatever, let's give it a try. So the way it currently works is whenever, whenever it generates these sprites, it goes through two stages. First of all, it generates the, the, uh, the first, it copies the first sprite into a location in memory, 
uh, and then it uses these tables to shift things along. And the way this works is it's how much it actually shifts all the pixels across. So um, when it says one, it actually means uh, two pixels because it's multicolor. Um, so it's one multicolor pixel. Uh, so it shifts across by So this is what the first column is how many pixels it moves across. So you can see this totals. 12, which is the full width of the of the sprite. Although that doesn't look right because the last frame. I'm not sure actually. Or it might be where these these squeeze happens actually. So we, we might need to mess around with these values a little bit. But the, this table is basically what's been used to to squeeze those values. Um, so I'm hoping there is a loop uh, or two in here which is counting up to 8 and that's where we can start here um, by reducing it. Uh, okay, so there's one here uh, which is an unroll, which is good because that will save us a bit of memory in there if we do this. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit at a time and see what happens. That's the safest way to do this. Right, have a great time, Colt. I'm happy to do Force. Thanksgiving Day, whatever you want to call it. Is it, wait, not Thanksgiving, is it? It's uh, Independence Day. Thanksgiving is the. Thanksgiving is the November one, isn't it? That's right. I don't know, I'm not American, am I? Pretty sure if you said Happy Shrove Tr Tuesday to uh, Americans, they wouldn't know what we meant. Is that because I'm pretty sure that's a British. Uh, I know it's, it's a worldwide thing. I, I can't imagine Pancake Day as a thing in, in America because every day is Pancake Day music too loud now. <laughs> oh wow, it is quite loud here. Yeah, let's drop it down to... Okay, it has just gone quiet. That's not me. Yeah, no, I, I just happened to do it at the point where the music dropped. <laughs> And this is the other problem I have, and this is something I try to, to solve as well, and, and obviously I've not succeeded. Um, it is the, the, the music volume. So let me go back to that tune again. This, this one. Okay. So that's that volume, and then the next track, I can't hear it, and that's really annoying. So I, I, put, I did put an expander in there as well to try and expand the quieter music up to the volume of the other one, but <sighs> so frustrating, so frustrating. I don't know how to how to deal with these. But we just deal with it for the loudest and then work from there, I guess. Um. Yeah, Pancake Day is, is kind of stupid. It's the fact that we call it Pancake Day. Um, I think I think Shrove, because it is Shrove Tuesday, isn't it? But I think Pancake Day itself is, as, as a thing, is kind of quite a British thing. A live band and a proper mixing desk. <laughs> Just have them behind me over there. I've been bit today, right on my knuckle. Not a good kind of bite, like a something's bit me. I don't know what it is. It is really difficult. So music volume when you're when you're streaming uh, voice is is so difficult to get right. I can I can't imagine how hard it is to do proper um, 
know, TV and film stuff like that. It must be really difficult to get the volumes just right. And the EQs, I guess. King's Day here right now. Where's that? King's Day. Wow, I don't even know what that is. Oh, is that the... Is, is... I think I've heard of this, actually. I can't remember what, but there's this... I've got a vague kind of memory of it for something. Okay, so I'm, I'm pretty sure these sprites are going to be wrong now. Um, this is going to be annoying. Can I not load in... It's got to be an easy way of doing this. Hang on. Well, uh, let's just check in the game first, I guess. It's the easiest way. Holland, yeah. I, I do vaguely remember something about it. I've got a couple of Dutch friends, and they've probably mentioned it. Okay, that kind of looked alright. Oh, I've actually got a shooting first. Okay, but I suspect that that hasn't actually filled up the memory properly, so let's uh, save a snapshot image. See, that music's just too low, so I'm going to skip that. Can you make... Oh, right, yeah, no problem. Oh, for default, um, I think it is on two times. My screen is massive, so um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's on two times as default anyway. Yeah, double size, double scan. Yeah. It's just because my screen, so it's a 4K screen, so that's why it looks so, so big. <laughs> Paul, how long before you read Steps comments? See? I'm trying, I'm trying to make sure that I read chat a little bit more, because I, I realise... There's the opinion that I don't read chat, so I'm just trying to prove you all wrong. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what it's done here. No. It kind of looks like it's... It definitely looks different. I'm not sure what it's done. So let's play around a little bit. Can I adjust the volume up a bit ten times? No. Tonight I'm going to play um, Flashback on the Jaguar, which I'm, I'm looking forward to. I'm hoping that I'm not going to destroy a great memory by playing it. I'm hoping it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I, I'm trying not to do that. I, I realise I've watched people coding um, and, and talking to chat a lot, and it does get kind of distracting. Um, I don't want to do that. I want to. I want to make sure I focus on the code, but at the same time, I want to. I want to keep an eye on what's going on in chat. Just figured out that I lost so much time on Twitch seeing dumb people as when they're a great chance related to program. Oh, thank you, Andre. <laughs> the Creatures 3 chat begins, it does, yeah. Flashback was a groundbreaking game. I remember the first time I played it, I couldn't believe that I was seeing the animations that I was seeing. Oh, so. uh, Red Fox. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is work out what the hell is going on with these 
dissolves and stuff, so it is doing this dissolve here. Um, it just runs this seven times, so maybe I have to do that. Maybe, maybe this is something else. I think this is... Dissolves. Oh, no, no, it's not. This is... Ah, okay. We are actually... No, no, I don't know what this is doing. So let's go and have a look at the egg. Oh, oh, it's just running through this table. Okay. So given, given a... Um, a value here, it just runs through the table. So that actually does need to stay the same, that's correct. Source, target. Okay, so we need to make sure that when we update the target, we only update four sprites at a time, not eight. The last eight sprites, sprites flipped. So by this point here, we've already copied the first set of sprites. In fact, if I put a breakpoint in here, we can go and have a look what happens in the debugger. Debugger is probably the way to do this. Run from the right folder. Go. Okay, there we go. So now we've generated that. So let's go and have a look at sprite memory. Now there is, I remember how to do this now. There is a screen that has all the, well, that has them actually down the side as well, but there was a, like a full memory map view, which I cannot seem to find there. Oh no, it's character memory. Okay, it's fine, we'll go with this. So we're looking at 6,000 in here. And we're looking at how many sprites it creates. It creates one, two, three, four. Man, that's hard to actually follow. Oh, you can see with the purple what it's created. So it's created, it's created eight sprites because it's gone up to 6,200. So that's eight sprites total. And it hasn't touched any of the, the flip side, which is the next bit. So if I do press F11, you should see it creates the flip and then the next sprite as well stops it okay right so we definitely need to fix it before we get here so this is what we're looking to change something in here so the way this seems to be working have a loop point it into the warp table so this y i'm guessing is the thing that we need to increase Have a look. I'm not seeing anything. Oh, here we go. Aha, okay. Do that two zero. I think, I think that might actually be all we need to do. At least for this half of the sprite, anyway. Um, uh, Flash of Taylor, Prince of Persia, that I think it probably was, but I, I think what made Flashback stand out was that it was, um, it was insanely detailed as well. So it wasn't just like they had really good rotoscoped animation. The backgrounds and the incidental animations and stuff that were going on were really, really good. So it was kind of like Prince of Persia on steroids, I think. And that, for me, was what made it kind of stand out a little bit more. Check and chat after 11 is probably not a great idea, to be honest. Uh, Kick and Sam, never heard about it. Uh, I just to put my windows and so one stuff to do. Actually, buy Sublime. Um, no, I probably should though. The amount I use it, but I'm, I think 
I've kind of made a conscious decision that I think I'm going to switch to uh, Visual Studio Code when um, when the Mega 65 comes, uh, just because I, I need a bit more flexibility over the the plugin. Uh, so I'm probably going to switch over to it at that point. Um, but what I might try and do is create um, ah perfect yeah that's it's created own four sprites now. We're going to need to change how the sprites work because at the moment they're um, it's only doing the first four frames rather than interleaved frames. Um, oh god. Yeah, I might try and create um, a fully portable uh, C64 dev environment, um, or at least at least a very easy to set up dev environment. So you download a file, you um, you click install, it will install Visual Studio Code, Kick Assembler, Vice, and set all your files, uh, all your um, all your uh, settings files up as well. Hey, Pixel Drama Club, welcome to the stream, dude. How's it going? VS Code's be set up to do the F78. Yeah, it, it can. Um, I, I don't know exactly how to do it, but I, I'm pretty sure it can be done. Um, it certainly has build pipelines, same as Sublime, so there's no reason it couldn't, couldn't do that. But that's what I mean. I, I want to set it up so that it's it's download this package and it's, it's basically just ready to go, so... Uh, yeah, it's F5, isn't it? Not um, not F7, but yeah, basically. Um, because the other thing I'm going to do as well, I, I've talked about this a little bit on Discord. So with the Mega 65, it obviously uses a different instruction set um, to the 6510, except it's it's more it's just a it's a superset of the 6510. So everything that's in 6510, it can still use. Uh, and then it has a few extra things. So it has like a Z register and a few other stuff like that. Um, the, the hexadecimal values for the opcodes is exactly the same in 4510. So technically you can use Kick Assembler. You can write something in Kick Assembler and run it on the Mega 65 and it will work um, in Mega 65 mode. It's just you can't use the extra commands. You can't use anything that's not in 6510. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some extension uh, pseudo commands for, um, for Kick Assembler that will extend the um, extend the command set to include other things. So, for instance, you've got load x, load y, uh, but you've also got load z in the, in forty five ten. Um, you've got push accumulator, but you've also got push x, push y, push z, things like that. So, I'm I'm going to add all of those those commands in. Um, and hopefully try and fix the syntax highlighting file as well. Uh, you cannot create proper structs and have to use that Python wannabe limited scripting. There is, um, I think you can use JavaScript for it as well now. Um, I seem to vaguely remember something about that. Uh, thank you for the follow, Florian3321. And thank you for the follow, um, I think I missed a few there actually. Uh, Andrake289 and Dink Smallwood. Thanks guys. Yeah, check check it out. I'm I'm pretty sure you can use JavaScript for for their stuff now. Uh, what was I going to do? I was okay. Yeah, right. So this is now only generating four sprites, and obviously we don't want to copy eight sprites. We only want to copy four sprites. So I'm hoping it looks like. This is the right place. I'm going to start adding comments in now and again when I work things out because I realise when I do code normally it doesn't take me so long uh, to do something like this um, and having done this over um, in the course of over a year now um, it's becoming really hard to remember what the hell I'm doing, especially as I only do it once a week as well. Oh, some proper ninja style fly swat in there. Yeah, Godot's pretty good as well. I, I did look at some Godot stuff. 
um, but just for kind of market kind of penetration, I think um, I think Game Maker Two is is incredible. The stuff they've managed to to get into what's essentially a very kind of professional package is pretty impressive. It's just not cheap. That's the, that's the only thing. It is if you want to export to every platform, you you are going to spend quite a bit of money. Okay, so four sprites correct. So now what I'm hoping to see is when I press F11, six one hundred. Also, okay, that does not look mirrored at all. Uh, okay, there's something a little bit weird going on here, so I might have to step through this code a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go for a quick smoke break. Uh, when I come back, we'll step through this. So. Uh, da -da 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 -da. All right, I'll be back in back in a few minutes, guys. Be right back. All right, I'll bet. All right, welcome to the CML Oh, you've been doing a video. Cool. Um, does it actually display? No, it doesn't. It doesn't tell you how many lines. So a hell of a lot of white space in these things as well. So. Oh, hey, Doctor as well. Everybody's here. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to grab um, something going on here. Carry on. Oh my god. Uh, C plus plus looks like C plus plus. So dots. What are we talking about here? Oh, is Vice written in C or C plus plus? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, to be honest. All I know is that the latest versions are really buggy. I'm not happy with them. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna run the game. I'm gonna export another uh, another snapshot. I'm gonna have a look at it in the sprite editor and see what we've got. Oh damn it! So this is what we've got at the moment. So I'm hoping to see it come up to here instead. Um, hmm. I'm not sure what it's done there. It's definitely only done one half of each of the wall animations, but then it's not done the mirror copy at all. So it looks like it's done a full eight sprites for the mirror copy. Okay, so let's go back to this and have a look. So I thought this was going to be... Um, I knew this was going to be a pain in the ass to do, but uh, whatever. Okay, so sprite source. Thanks for the host, Sinlo. Okay, so sprite source, sprite target, uh, and then this is copying the one sprite. Poppy sprite should hopefully update the target, which it does not look like it's doing. Gen target. Oh, here we go. So the generated target is what gets updated. Okay. 
Okay, that's fine. Um... Small target. Ah. That needs to be one. I think I need to think about this. So let's run this in the debug because I really need to figure out what's going on at that point. Um, based on what's in these locations here. So I knew this was going to be a pain in the ass, but it does need doing. We need to get some more room. So, we have target in 42 and a source in 40, so let me just advance so they're both stored. So 40 and 42, so 40 says CF100 and 42 says 6000. Okay, so that's our source and target. Okay, load gen target. Okay, so I need to load these ones here. Okay, right. So now our source and target is 5F100 and 6100. Ah, okay, so. Six one hundred is correct, but this needs to be just subtract one. So I think that's where that is. So that's this bit here. Okay, cool. Well, right. so let's give that a run. Let's see if that's generate the right sprites. Oh, this isn't the most interesting one. So I do apologise for that. What are we on about here? <laughs> C versus C++. Ah, uh, we could we could fight about that all night. Hey Prince Faze, welcome to the stream, dude. Just in the process now of trying to free up some more memory um, for the for the enemy behaviors and for the music as well. Um. tunes are really sweet tonight they were picked by um i forget how to say his name now it's x crazy or something x x crazy um yeah x-ray i'm gonna call him crazy because that's kind of it's kind of how they work but yeah x-ray oh x-rays yeah that makes more sense <laughs> That makes more sense. Okay, go, 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 go. There we go. And then take a snapshot. Wait for it to crash. Select the snapshot file from here. That's better. So now we're getting animations flipped on each side which is good but we've still got a gap of four um in between each one so we just need to figure out that bit um so that's probably when this is finished it will be this bit here um i'm gonna put an add one there instead i think that might be enough <laughs> Look at the time, Jaguar time. Yeah, I am. I'm really looking forward to playing that, but I'm. I'm going to make sure I do my um, my standard allotted amount of time for game dev because I do want to get this game finished this year if I can help it. Um, and we we are actually very close. It might not seem like it, but we're we're kind of closing in on the polish stages now. So um, it's not that long to go, really. Set to snapshot file again. 
perfect there we go so now we're taking half as much memory to do these animations so i still need to adjust these animations a little bit to make sure that they work correctly because uh, these are going to look a bit odd um, but first of all i need to make sure that when i i run this animation it looks correct because it's not going to look correct at the moment because the game is still going to try and play eight animations 10 stream transition screen done that was done in two streams what are you on about Stop complaining. It does like to moan, does Halos. That's why we love him. Right, okay, let's get some... Oh, actually, that didn't look bad. I'm kind of suspicious, though. I think that wasn't right. Oh, no, it is wrong. Okay. It flips over to the other side again as well, so... Do need to adjust that so when the enemy is being absorbed um which i think is in enemies behaviors let's get my screen split to two as well Absorb behavior. Here we go. Time between eat frames. Okay, so I think this probably needs to be increased. We'll do this in a minute. Uh, I just want to make sure it works first. Calculate the sprite pointer. So this is the sprite pointer. Uh, okay, that doesn't need to change. Determine the start of the eat absorb animation. Uh, so yes, this is this definitely does need to change. So. So it's now going to be um, this, basically. So, how do we work this out? So, uh, enemy type is here. Uh, we times it by 4 and add it to MSB. So now we need to times that by 2 because of this here. Um, enemy eat offset X, and this just adds either 5C or 5D, it would be, which is this bit here, basically. Now, how do we know when it's finished eating? Number of frames in eat animation, here we go. I'm going to change that to 4. frame timer okay and this is the update so the update is going to move the sprite along time between frames meet counter so that is this bit here so I'll put a four there so it's now running at half the speed Increase enemy eating index. Yeah, I think that I think that is it actually. I think that is all we need to do. Let's get rid of that break point. Okay. Ooh, that was a speed. So, that was spot on, I think. It's kind of hard to tell because of the the death and the fact that I'm running around like a lunatic when I grab that power. That was spot on, I think. Right, let me turn the, the break point off. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to shuffle, uh, shuffle the stuff up a little bit. But let me just turn this break point off and show you it. Um, so you can see that it is doing the same thing as it was before. And yeah, I'll make it, I'll make it really big so you can see it as well. And then we just need to work out what the limit of the number of enemies that we're going to have is. And... Um, Make 
sure we, we set a memory address for that that's based on, on that number. Oh my god, that speed thing is annoying. I think that needs to be slowed down a bit. I mean, it, it does exactly the same thing, so... It's actually much harder to tell. Oh, no, it didn't work that way, okay. See if... Okay, that one worked that way, but one of the enemies looked wrong. Oh, we also need to re-implement the screen shake as well. That's That's gone now. Need to get that back in there. Let me uh, just put enemies into the into the list instead of power ups. Sounds like Doctor Who. It is Doctor Who. Four. So let's change that to six. Change that to zero. So we've got nothing but enemies there, not power-ups. I, I will put them back so I remember how the power-ups work. So I need to kind of keep this level as an example level for the editor. But for testing, it's good to have all these enemies in, so... So that absorbed perfectly that way. That absorbed that way, fine. I think it's just this flying one that's wrong. Yeah, not seeing anything for the flying one. Maker sixty four has requested a set two. <laughs> Parasol Stars boss tube. So it it doesn't exist though. Or are you just saying that's what it sounds like? Something sounds like. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what your your requests never make any sense. <laughs> oh god, you're driving me to drink. Ah, okay. It's like the Lombard or something, isn't it? Um, so why why does that one enemy not show properly? That's that's the next challenge here. What is going wrong to pick the wrong behaviour there? So there's two things we need to do. We need to move the the sprites to the end. Um, of that block of memory so that we can use the memory up to that point better. So I'm just going to load in the, the, the sprites that we've currently got and count how many different enemies we've got. It's one enemy per behaviour, so... We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight at the moment. So I think if we add another two enemy types in, that's ten. Uh, I think that's probably enough. And that would give us three kilobytes extra to mess around with. Uh, we've got a bit more room down here, but we've also got some room in the in the main sprite file to put enemies as well. So, um, <laughs> so with that in mind, that means we need to move 10. Okay, so in that block of code, we had space for 16. So we do need to move it to, to 6,300 is where it needs to start. Okay. So let's do that first. Let's, let's get that moved across. So that should be pretty simple because we set that up here. So... I 
And if I just run this code now uh, and generate another snapshot, we should be able to see. Uh, no, we need to change the steps. We need to change the um, the player color for the green player to be cyan instead. So we decided cyan was going to be the the color of the second player. It's currently green, but we're going to move it to cyan so we can have a green background. Save that snapshot. So we're looking for this to have basically start here instead. Is that right? No. Uh, one, two. Hang on. What's 1k? That's 1k. So it would start down here instead. Um, which it does not. Why? Oh, because I made stupid calculation, that's why. That's not 3k, that's, that's three pages. 3k would be C instead. I'm all right calculating. It's, it's after 12 o'clock, I can't calculate, so that's why I need to get this, this stuff done now. I have got another bottle of wine after this one. This one, it's actually going down quite well, so it's fairly easy to drink. It seems really inefficient way of doing this, but I haven't got a good sprite view in the debugger, unfortunately, so... That's better. So you can see here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we've got room for about ten enemies down here. And that leaves a whole this whole chunk here for code. Whereas before we just had one one row. We've now kind of made a lot more room. Generated warp sprites. So I need to update that now. Uh, I think that's I think I set that in the assets file somewhere. instead. So we're using about two-thirds of the sprites we were using before to do that. Um, you can see that's that's freed up about we've got about 4k free now um, for behaviors uh, and that's still with that's still with 5k for music so we can probably afford to um, gift some of that memory to to the music um, and there may be other optimizations we can do as well if, if we do need more. But for now, I think that's probably enough. Uh, we just need to fix the actual display of those behaviors now. Well, interestingly, the graphics is actually a lot more. So we're, we're actually looking at... So normally we'd have 16K graphics in a game, but we are using these dynamic sprite frames as well so we've actually got more like 20 22k or so that's used during the game uh some of that's screen ram obviously but um but we are using more than we normally would have free for sprites we're using more sprites than we've got free basically oh, for <laughs> yeah that's not going to happen anytime soon. It's looking like the Mega 65 has got some pretty high resolutions as well, so I'm looking forward to playing around with those. Right, so this is what's working out the frame. So let's let's have a look at this. Um, okay, so this wouldn't be plus 5C anymore. This is actually going to be uh, 6 is the start, uh, the type starts at 1, so the very first enemy would be at 6A, 
um, which is this bit here, which would make this 6B. So I think that should cover it. So we just make. I just want to make sure that all all the enemies have absorb frames um, in both directions, um, and that they're correct. So that was correct. That's correct. It's the flying one that I'm worried about. The flying one seemed to give me the wrong sprite before. If it's come round. Seriously. Oh, come on. So it's just going to follow that same pattern. So... Perfect. There we go. Right. So we've saved a big old chunk of memory now. That's good. Pleased with that. In fact, I'm so pleased with that. I'm going to commit um, while I can. Bounces off quite far, yeah. <laughs> so the reason the reason it does that is because the sprite itself has got quite a gap on it here. Um, however, what I want to do is is change the flying behavior a little bit anyway. So if an enemy is flying around, um, it's going to swoop down to head height, but never actually you you can stand safely in the middle of a platform. And it's only if you're at the edges of the platform you could get hit, or if you jump up. So. I'm not too fussed about that behaviour at the moment. We'll, we'll we'll readdress that when we when we come to kind of playing around with it. Uh, just because enemies that kind of swoop down on platforms are kind of a bit annoying, um, so it's good to have them swoop down to head height and above. So they only become dangerous when you start actually jumping up to try and shoot them. So the crown drops when he eats. Yeah, that was intentional. That was a haze idea actually. I think. Um, we we had the issue where um, the animation the animation would have the crown overlaid on it and it looked really weird. So Hayes just suggested, why don't we drop the crown when when they eat? Um, which is kind of I think kind of works quite well because yeah, like you say, he gets it back instantly. Um, but if the other so if you both run in to eat something, um, then the the other player will it's it's another kind of it's another um mechanic for helping the player who's behind uh, so in one player it doesn't matter but the, the crown won't be there in one player anyway but in two player if you go to eat something the other player can come and grab the the crown off you so um i mean obviously you pick it back up again as soon as you've stopped eating which is right you should do um <coughs> Um, Alright. Uh, I forgot what I was going to do then. Oh, yeah, I was going to commit it. Just make sure I've got the latest stuff committed. Um, why is that in there? That shouldn't be well. That shouldn't be there either. I'm saving stuff in the wrong places. So I've been doing a lot of copying um, for my uh, 1581. I was trying to find a good um, way of copying D81s to disk using the PC, uh, but apparently they don't. Most well, in fact, all of them don't support the um, uh, USB floppy drive. So I'd have to get a motherboard that supports an old floppy connector, which I don't think I've got. Uh, I do have an old motherboard, but I'm pretty sure it's not got a floppy drive connector on it. So. And I'm not going to build a computer just for copying discs. That's crazy. I've I've got a way of doing it on the on the ultimate. It's just a bit slow. That's all. Um, so this is uh, reduced warp sprites to four frames each. Reducing overall. Like 128 frames to 80 and 
increasing my count to 10. Hey Mads28, welcome to the stream dude. I don't know, it sounds like something you would do, yeah. I, I am I'm, I'm tempted, but I don't really have anywhere to put it. And um, for something just to copy to for that is, is a little bit much, so yeah. Alright, so the latest code is there if you're following along on flu bits. There hasn't really been any um any asset updates though, so it shouldn't make any difference. Um, what's that interface? Which interface? Oh, you mean this? This is Source Tree. So it's a it's a it's a Git interface. Yeah, it's a Source Tree. It's called. It's one I used at work for a while. I don't use it anymore at work. I use GitHub Desktop at work, but um, or command line, depending on what I'm doing. Um, but it's it's re it's. I mean, it's kind of less useful when it's just me working on it. But if you've got a project that um, twenty people are working on, then this graph is invaluable um, because it kind of visualizes. I mean, you can get all this stuff from the command line anyway, but it visualizes all the branches and where they're coming from and and stuff so it's kind of it's kind of handy like that i've just got used to it to be honest um and and let's be honest git doing git stuff in the command line okay it's cool well done you can use git in the command line but it's not the it's not the prettiest thing in the world if, you, if you've got a gui for it you may as well freaking use it so um pixel drama club says i use console yeah it's same i i, I kind of use I use the console for cloning, sometimes for stashing as well and um, restoring stashes. Uh, and for some stuff that this can't do. So, like, if you do need to kind of reset uh, certain kind of heads and stuff on, on stuff, then, then it's kind of useful. But, um, yeah. If you've got a GUI for something, use it. I mean, why make, you, why make your life harder? I mean, with this, I can really easily kind of switch between all my different projects and pull them and push them and stuff and i don't have to keep you know opening up a different command line for each one or switch into a different folder so um i tend to use in visual studio code i tend to use the um the built-in one as well which is really nice just open up cosmos so uh visual studio code has this which allows you to kind of see the changes and kind of commit and push from here as well and when you've got multiple projects really nice you can see kind of which projects have it so it's kind of handy to to do it in here as well um but yeah the 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 oh no use command line no i'll use whatever makes my life easier i don't care if i look cool or not while i do it <laughs> which is what it comes down to right <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean it is. It can be painful to to do um, some stuff command line in Git, so it's, it's handy to have that. And uh, the, like I say, the main reason I use this is if you've got a project that's got hundreds of branches and loads and loads of contributors, it's really really handy to kind of to see the exact history graph of what's going on. So I can I can look at any branch and I could say, okay, this branch was generated from this commit here. It's been, it's had the master merged into it here and here, um, and it's currently about five commits ahead of uh, of master, and so on and so on. And then you can see, and like when people branch off branches and uh, roll stuff back as well, it shows you all of that. So it's kind of, it's kind of nice. If people want too much for retro, it can be it's on eBay. Um, you should check out. I think it was. Decor29 that sent me um, a link to the Dutch um, the like the, the Dutch eBay sort of thing um, and that's some really good price Commodore stuff on it actually I was quite kind of surprised at um, how reasonably priced the stuff was compared to the UK um, I can't remember the name of it I'd have to check through my messages um, but it was it was a kind of nice nice site actually it was Decor29 that sent it. That's how I should know that it was... Um... 
actually let me see if i can find it because you guys should should take a look at it um it was pretty decent What's everybody think about the the um, the audio ducking? Is it working? Is it is it too much? Should I just revert back to how I was before? Um, I, I, that's the one. Yes, thank you. So that link that um, WBW has posted, that's that's the link. It's really it's really handy to be honest. There's some nice stuff on there. You sent that message out. It? How is it since then? Because I did change some settings a little bit. Hoping it's less aggressive now, so okay, cool. That's all right then. That's so what I wanted to do was give those who were struggling to hear the music a way to have the music a bit louder, um, but make sure that those who were having my voice drowned out by the music could could still enjoy it as well. So honestly, there's been a couple of times. Um, there's been a couple of times in the past 10 or so streams where I've just thought, you know what, screw the, um, screw the audio. I'm just going to go with no, no music whatsoever. Um, but I do kind of like having it on myself, so I do have it very faint on in the background. Yeah, Decor. Yeah, so Decor Twenty Nine was the one that saved me. So thank you for that link, by the way, Decor. I will be using that at some point. Uh, I say I'm doing these give. So next week I'm going to do a giveaway, assuming that I get everything in time. Um, I've got. Uh, so I'll tell you what. What we're giving away? We're giving away brand new copies of four C64 games. Um, uh, Sam's Journey on cartridge, so it's the one that comes in the box with the map and the cards and the little gems and stuff. In fact, I've got. Uh, hang on, I'll show you it. So this is my copy. You won't be getting my copy, obviously, but um, this is what you get with it. Hopefully, it's still in the box. Uh, so you get a proper original one. It comes with a little hologram in the corner. Um, and you get the game, obviously. Sam's Journey on Cartridge. Uh, you get these little card things, which are all the, the different uh, suits that he has. For some reason, you get this little uh, treasure chest full of gems. Um, I don't know why they did that, but you, you get that anyway. Um, and then you also get this kind of awesome little game map as well. Um, show you where all the levels are. Uh, and a proper manual as well, and it's a pretty decent manual. Uh, so you'll be getting a copy of that, whoever wins. Uh, why do you want to keep this? Oh, you're not getting this. This is my copy. I've ordered a brand new copy. Definitely you're not getting my copy. I just so you know, every, everything I'm giving away on this giveaway is is uh, funded by uh, your donations on Patreon and through Twitch. So I've um, I'm not giving away any of my stuff. This is all brand new stuff. Um, so Sam's journey should come hopefully this week. Um, and then from RGCD, uh, we've got a game called Kobo sixty four, um, which I know nothing about, but apparently it's a, it's a relatively new new game. It's released on cartridge from RGCD, so uh, we might take a look at it um, maybe on Thursday or something. Uh, I'll run it from I'll run it from an image rather than I'm not going to open the box or anything. Um, so that's two cartridge games. Uh, if I win, I'll donate mine to the person who gives you it. Do what you want with it. It's entirely up to you. It's fine. It's just my way of saying thank you to you guys for for supporting um, supporting the channel and and, um, and and through Patreon. And it's it's a way for me to do something with the the money that I earn from Patreon because it's kind of annoying that I don't really have anything to do with it and I don't really do an awful lot. So. Um, 
and then there's two tape games as well so you'll be getting uh millie and molly on on tape uh, from bitmap soft and also luma as well um and that's why i've i've actually got spare copies of luma but i'm keeping the spare copies of luma i've actually ordered and paid for a copy of my own game to give away on stream so <laughs> I am buying wine and I am buying wine and tequila, but I have more left over. Honestly, I get I get more than I can drink. So I don't. I really don't mind doing this, and and I kind of I want to give you guys something. But the reason I bring it up is because uh, just to go back to this marketplace thing, uh, what I might do at some point. Um, is is run a Commodore 64 giveaway as well where I actually give away a machine a refurbished machine so I'll buy I'll buy a machine probably from, probably from that marketplace um, take it apart clean it out um, put new capacitors in it put heat sinks on everything test everything uh, install a voltage protector into the power supply or into the machine itself uh, and and give a give a Commodore 64 away as well Signed. I can sign it if you want, but I don't think it don't think it matters very much. <laughs> Breadbin or C64C? I do not know. I do not know. It will be whatever I can get my hands on. Um, but it's just a way of for there may be people out there who follow who follow the um, the stream um, or or all of the streams, whatever, uh, and are into the C64 stuff, but never actually bought. A real Commodore 64. They might have a mini. Uh, they might have the C64. Or they might just be using an emulator. So this is a way of kind of um, just kind of getting more people to have some real hardware and, and letting them um, letting them letting them kind of join in the fun with real stuff. So that's probably what's going to happen uh, at some point this year. I don't know when. I'm going to do a couple more software giveaways first. So. So Hayes still hasn't got his cart yet. Yeah, he, he hasn't got his cart. He hasn't got his Commodore. I keep asking him what he wants on the cart, and he's never answered me. Then I asked him, uh, "Why Benny?" I'm oh, so bad from that one. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, just put Luma on it. All right. Okay. I I, I tell you what, Hayes, send me. Um, well, I can download it. Uh, Mario Cement. And I'll put that on it as well. I might ask you for um, actually. I can rip the graphics from the from the game itself. I might put a nice intro on it. I might do a, a custom um, intro screen. So you've got two games on. You'll have Luma and Mario Cement Factory, and you can just you do nice logos that you can pick. No, don't put your game on it. All right, fine. <laughs> Screw you then. All right, fine. Fine, 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 fine. Need to fix the game first. But it's actually getting to the point where I'm probably feeling safe enough to go to the post office soon as well. So um, just let me know whenever you want, Hayes, and you know how you want to do this. If you want to, if you want to pop round, but if you if you pop round. I, I tell you now, um, the the missus is not going to want anybody to come in. I want my kids to come round, and I can't even get them to come round at the moment. Um, so it would have to be some kind of weird drop off at the door sort of thing. Um, but we could arrange that, or or you can, you know, send me your address in a private message, and I can post it to you. But there is a Commodore One Two Eight, that very one there, that's sat there waiting for you. So as soon as you want it, let me know, and I'll send it to you. Uh, thank you for the follow, Paper Foil. Welcome to the stream, dude. Okay. Um, all right. Let's let's have a look at the game. Let's let's have a look. So um, we've freed up quite a bit of memory. Um, I'm not going to expand the music area just yet. Afterburner. Oh, that's a good choice. That is a good choice. Who did, who did the afterburner music? Oh wait, I've only. I've only heard the afterburning music from uh, the Spectrum because that's what I played it on. Weirdly, oh, it's Adam Gilmore. What? 
No, Adam Gilmore didn't do that. Okay. Oh, I have heard this, yeah. Yeah, I definitely have heard this. talk too much. Destroy the music. Okay. Trying to think what to do next. Good behaviors maybe. Um Also got actually thinking about it. Sorry, I'm going silent. I'm trying to not interrupt the music. I've also got this as well. We should drop into the intro screen. If this was done. Now I can rearrange these to the oh, let's have a look what that is. Well, not quite. I mean, it looks like a lot, but it's not that much. Um, so, <laughs> good sir, why are you writing this in assembly? Because it's a Commodore 64. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be a Commodore 64 uh, development stream if I wasn't doing it in in assembly. It would be something else that just happened to work on the Commodore. Um, Uh, but yeah, it's um, it's the most efficient way to write decent uh, decent games for the Commodore 64, so that's why. Understandable, yep. <laughs> it 
So, yeah, space-wise, it looks like we've got a lot, but let me explain what's going on here. So, this area here um, is data for the transition um, that has to be stored. And there's a little bit more up here, which is used for... Uh, it, it shows as blank, but it's actually being used, and that's being used for um, the software sprite um, frames, basically. This is a Vic bank. Um, pretty much the only gaps in here are just gaps where we've got space to do stuff in the sprites um, or in the character sets. In fact, there is no space in the character set. Uh, let me go back now because it's just... Oh, it's more afterburner tunes. Fine, I'll leave these on. I am going to... There you go. <clears throat> just going to reduce the music down a little bit. There you go. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Uh, oh yeah, we, we've got some we've got some kind of reserved memory in here um, uh, for for extra sprites for the enemies and stuff. Uh, this little bit here, just above C zero hundred, this is screen RAM, so that's not going to get used. Uh, likewise, this gap down here is the memory before basic. Um, the most useful part of that is at 0400 to 0800, which is the default screen RAM. Um, we're going to use that for copying data from here uh, when we do the transition. So when we do the transition, we need to use this block of memory here. Uh, and that gets copied down into here so we can use it for the transition. Um, from here... Um, to here is where all the maps are going to go. So you can see the map, we've got two maps at the moment and basically this block here from... Oh my god, it's not going to let me select that one. No. No, it's not going to let me do it. All right. Basically from, from here to here is, is map space. Uh, and currently we're using this much, but we're not using any compression yet, so we'd expect that to increase. Uh, and this is the memory that we've just freed up here. So this was the memory we originally had left for behaviors, not a lot at all. That was basically all our code had to fit into here, um, all our behavior code, and there just wasn't enough room for it. Um, this is the the sprites that we've just generated, the warp sprites. Now we've shrunk them down, so we've actually gained this much memory here. So that's basically all we've got left for code is this little gap here. The rest of this is going to be used by map data, um, additional sprite data up here as well. Um, we still need to put some more intro code in, but I'm hoping we can squeeze some in down at 0200 and 0300 down here, which are down in the tape buffer area and um, just above the stack. So uh, we should be able to fit a little bit there, I think. And we might be able to squeeze some of this code down a little bit. This chunk here, and the, the, the biggest block at, um, from 1000, this is currently the music, um, which is using 5k. So you can see it's using quite a bit. Um, I'm, In fact, I'm going to right now extend that to 6k, which will make steps and prints phase quite happy, uh, which is still... So I, I gave them um, a brief of 7k for the music. Um, I'm not comfortable giving them 7k quite yet, but we I think we will be able to do it. But I'm going to right now expand that to... Uh, oh, where is it? I'm going to right now expand that to 6k. So there's absolutely, definitely 6k um, reserved. Um, yeah, 6, 6k definitely reserved for the music. I think we can probably squeeze another 1k out of it, but there's absolutely 6k reserved, no problem. All right, I'm going to take a quick break. Um, so I'm going to drink this wine first. And when I come back, we'll, we'll try something different. Um, I don't know whether to add some more enemy behaviors in because I think that's kind of the next big task or whether to do some intro stuff. Um, so there's there's three areas that, that need kind of large amounts of work before we can consider this ready for kind of designing levels. 
there's the intro because obviously it's got you know um uh, placeholder text at the minute at the bottom we've got nothing going on in the middle we've got no title up here so that's that's one thing we need to do um we need to add all the enemy behaviors in um because at the moment we don't we don't have we have two very simple behaviors in nothing else and then we have the bonus screen as well um yeah for i think you're right actually i think maybe the enemy behaviors is where we should look and the enemy behaviors is what's going to take the biggest chunk of memory up as well so i think if we get the enemy behaviors in then we can kind of go from there and work out how much room we've got left so i think what we'll actually do is we'll as soon as we're on an optimizing mission at the moment we'll see if we can optimize the behaviors a little bit because there's a lot of macros in there that are being reused all over the place and every time we reuse them they're inserting that block of code again so i'm going to see if there's a way to to change those behaviors um to make them a bit more efficient and we can measure that quite easily by looking at the uh the end address here uh which is 608d at the moment with the new music um expanded uh we're now using 6k for music and so we we'd like to try and reduce this number here um so the end it's says transition side index but that's not what it is at all i need to probably go through these labels at some point and make them a bit more meaningful but this is basically where the behaviors end so um we'll go and change we'll we'll, we'll refactor those a little bit and make them fit right i'm gonna go uh i will grab another bottle while i'm gone um actually no i won't because it, it'll just go warm i'm gonna i like to have my chardonnay cold so um but i am gonna go and have a smoke i'll be back in two three minutes guys be right back i'm back and the music seems to have gone dead for some reason so let's go back to uh i've completely forgotten the name that i was looking at before oh my god what was the name oh shit. Heinholt, thank you. Let's try and see. I need to shuffle it again. Is there a particular tune that you you like more than the others? Um, I'll stick that one on. It's the first tune and then go through. So you did say, I can't remember what it was. Hang on, it began with S. Scotland, yes, that was it. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, I don't know why it's... There we go. <laughs> oh, steps. My CC4 and, and not Amiga. Um... C64 is just the machine that I grew up with more than any. It's the machine I played the most in my teenage years. So uh, for me, it holds the most kind of interest. Um, and it's the one I kind of that, that got. Well, actually, no, that's not true. The, the BBC got me into programming. I went from BBC Micro in BASIC to Spectrum in BASIC. Then my Spectrum broke and I got a Commodore 64. I kicked up a fuss about the, the Commodore 64. I was like, this isn't a Spectrum, I don't want this. And then I played a couple of games and I was like, okay, forget the Spectrum, this is a lot better. Uh, then I tried to do Commodore Basic. Uh, about a week later, I realized Commodore Basic is absolutely terrible. Um, and so I, I learned Commodore Assembly Language. And then three years ago, four years ago or something, I, I got back into doing it again, so. Um, but I have had an Amiga. Um, I had uh, an Amiga 600, I think it was. Um, I briefly had an ST, believe it or not, um, but it didn't. I didn't have it for very long. Um, it was a, a borrow, basically, from a, from one of my cousins. Uh, I didn't like it anyway. The only game I played on it was Boogie Boy. 
Amiga. I played a lot of cannon fodder, a lot of worms on it, did a lot of uh, music in whatever it was called, Octomed or something. I think it's Octomed. Or one of the track one of the trackers anyway. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through these behaviors. We're going to find the most common things that are being used in here. And we're going to try and reduce them down. And we're going to try and get this, this number here. So transition side index, why it's called that, I don't know. But we're going to, we're going to try and reduce this number down a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, Worms was addictive. I think I had a Worms Plus on the Amiga and it let you kind of change loads of things. So you could have shotguns that each bullet exploded like a holy hand grenade so you could have some really really crazy kind of games on it so um and yeah that's the other reason as well mad beagle is um on the commodore 64 right when you when you want to draw something um if i want to draw well, let's do it sprites if i want to draw a, a sprite i've got this much room not that many pixels not that many colors there ain't that many permutations, so you can kind of mess around with something until it looks right. That's not the case on the Amiga. You need to kind of be able to draw on the Amiga, and I can't do that, so... <clears throat> uh, so Commodore is, Commodore's a nice kind of... I think the 8-bit machines are a nice middle ground where you've still got... You can still make some really nice looking stuff, but you, you don't have to have the crazy kind of levels of artistic ability that you need to to make a good looking Amiga game. I can make a shit looking Amiga game, no problem. Um, well, I assume I can, I've never done 68,000 assembly, but I'm pretty sure I could pick it up. Okay, right, let's have a look. So uh, set static memory. So these are macros, but the thing with these is I think these have to be macros because of the way that they work. Um, let's bring up the macros here. Uh, They're not doing very much anyway, so I, I think if we were to if we were to kind of replace the anything with like one or two instructions in, is probably fine as a macro. Um, but here's one, for instance, get enemy collisions. This is one where actually this could probably be done in a much uh, much smaller uh, method. Um, so let's let's actually let's go through the macros in here. Uh, and do that. So we've already done one for position enemy, so we don't need to do that. Um, update position. That is a huge one. Um, and it just takes two values, and it takes an X and a Y, but you can see the X and the Y are used to work out which half it needs to do in here. So actually, only one of these pieces of code is being run. Um, So actually, this isn't as big as it looks because <clears throat> either this is the code that's been inserted or these pieces of code have been inserted. One of each of these. So let's leave that one for now. We'll come back to that one. I think this could be a potential one. Set enemy frame, quite small. Don't think we need to do anything here. Uh, set enemy color. Okay, so this is the um, the thing that allows us to alternate between two colors. This could probably be um, something we we turn into a into a routine. So let's see where we're using that. I think we're probably using that in a few places. So actually, it doesn't look like it's been used in this one. We're using it directly here. We're just setting the enemy color directly. In this one, we are setting the enemy color. This is, this is the flying one. Okay. See, again, though, this would only be doing a very small piece of code here. It's only when. It's only when we're sending in two colors that it becomes a problem. So what we can do is here, we can move this code to somewhere else, but I don't think this is actually being used that often. So I don't think this is a problem either. 
Let's just skip over that one, skip over that one. Get enemy collisions. Okay, so this is a bit bigger. Um, and this is going to be being used everywhere, so we're using it here. Just do that trick. Yeah, so we can do the JSR trip um, for functions that don't have any parameters. So if they don't have a parameter, and we can do that. So, and I think I've already covered that in most of them, which are, yeah, I've done here and here. Um, so actually, actually, there isn't that many that are actually pure macros left. This is. Uh, Get enemy collisions is probably the biggest one that's left actually. I think that's some of that. Because that's now function call. These are function calls. So update position and get enemy collisions are the biggest ones. So enemy collisions is definitely happening here. Uh, and it's happening here, so it's happening twice in this one behavior, so that's very inefficient. Um, it's happening... Oh, that's a power-up, it's not happening that one. Yeah, it's not happening in that one, I don't think. All right, let's, let's try and do this one. Okay, so if we were to turn this into a, a, a call, well, I think the way I've been doing it is just putting SR on the end, right? So, and now we need to figure out how these values are used in here. So if I just move that to here, that is where those values are used. The only place those values are used, that should save a little bit of memory. Okay, so let's give that a go. Let's see how much that has saved. Okay, so that's running fine. It's compiling fine. And um, we've saved about... 64 bytes by doing that so it's not a huge amount but it will the thing is, is as we as we change these what we're doing is we're making future um uh we're making future behaviors a little bit easier to uh, a little bit smaller basically all right uh rob hubbard power play okay let's stick that one on power play hockey USA versus USR. Interesting. Why do you use Sublime Text and not Visual Pro? Yeah, I'm probably going to uh, switch to VS Code. Um, when I when I move into um, Mega 65, I'm probably going to switch over to VS Code. I've been using this since I started doing C64 again because VS Code really wasn't up to scratch at the time. Um, but every time I've every time I've used um, VS Code for my my day to day stuff, I kind of I can see it improving all the time and okay another all right platoon okay cool all right let's have a look so that's enemy collisions do fall is covered those are covered I think really the update position is really the only one left. Um, I've 
got an idea how we can make this work, okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna work through this function a little bit at a time and strip things out. Um, so I'm gonna start I'm gonna put it just above. I know it's kind of a bit weird, but um, and I'm gonna give them numbers. So this is routine 01, subroutine 01. And basically needs to replace all this here. And I don't see anything in here that's using XPOS and YPOS, which are the two parameters that we send in. So I can easily just drop that in here and put an RTS at the end. So that solves that section. Now this section is a little bit different. Um, but essentially I need to store... I need to store the value that we're going to use in a temporary variable. So I'm going to use zero page, which I'm going to open up here. Uh, I'm going to create something called update position temp. Oops. And then I need four more routines. So now, do these values? No, so one is subtract, one is add on y0, and one is subtract and add on x0. So we can't mess with those. But what we can do is if I, let's just put these in, like so. I think this will save us a hell of a lot of memory, actually. Because this is going to happen on pretty much everything, so. Uh, who thought this was a good idea? Comments should be started um, with no, 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 no. See, I think the other thing as well is when I when I started doing assembly language, I did it directly on the machine. Um, I did it directly in a program that ran um, in C64. Well, I assume it was in Basic. I'm not sure, but um, you basically wrote you wrote something like Basic. So your um, you know, you wrote line numbers, you wrote rem statements for your comments. So I never really used an assembler like everybody else has used. And it's only when I came back to um, the C64 that I started looking for another assembler. And the assembler I went for uh, was Kick Assembler. And the reason why Kick Assembler stood out to me is because I'd spent the best part of the past 10 years dealing with C style languages, you know, C sharp, Java, C. Uh, JavaScript, things like that, um, and the the standard is the double double slash. So um, to me, it just makes more sense and it feels more natural uh, for it to be like that. Plus the fact that you can kind of mix, kind of mix JavaScript with the um, the code in Kick Assembler means it works out quite well. Thanks for the follow, Xian Paku. Uh, oh, I've also missed uh, another one there, YesterQuest. Thank you for the follow, YesterQuest. I must have been smoking when, when you did that one. So the only thing I need to do is I need to store that value. So I'm going to load. Hayes has worked out that he can make me look at what he's saying by making it a SID request. <laughs> Which I'm not that keen on. I think I need a different I think I need a different system. Or I just need to like start using his points. <laughs> I 
because the thing is i keep rejecting it as well so it's not even it's not even spending i'm gonna right i'm gonna start accepting it you want me to listen use listen there you go otherwise it's gonna cost you 400 points but i think Hayes has got shit loads anyway so it really doesn't matter to him he probably probably uses more than uh probably earns more than he uses anyway so god damn it Hayes always finds the loopholes I was really proud of the text-to-speech system for the SIDS. I thought this is really good, because I'm going to get to hear what people want, and I'm not going to have to check the list as much. Of course, Hayes immediately uses it to get some free text-to-speech. <laughs> Ridiculousness. Um, yeah. Anyway. So what I need to do, so this is going to take a little bit more time to do, but it's going to save us a lot of memory. So I think that's kind of worth worth it. Yeah, trouble. <laughs> that should be his thing. <laughs> I like that. So yeah, I, I think the trade-off of using um, a little bit more processing time to do this is going to be worth it in the long run. Um, because the amount of memory we'll save will be very substantial. So I need to get all this in place, see how much memory it's saved, and just make sure it still works. It should work. I don't see any reason why it would. Um... Just concentrate a little bit while I do this, because one slip up and I end up making a mess of some code. Why does it do that? Oh, it's not. Is that how it's indented down there? I guess it must be. One, two, three. Why does this work though? Barjo graphics, Barjo boggers, Barjo bojo, Barjo bojo, Barjo. I'm Haze and Mario. Yikes. Yes. Yeah, so Mario. Yikes. Barjo graphics. Yes, apparently it does work, Hayes. <laughs> um, thank you for the bits, Hayes. Even if it is just to troll me, uh, it's appreciated. It all goes towards more wine, so it's all good. Yeah, I do need to spend more. Do you know what? I cannot wait till I go back to work because at the moment, um, if I'm not streaming, I'm probably asleep, which is really bad. So I, I'm looking forward to going back to work and actually being able to join these streams and do this stuff. Richmond Mike has requested a sit tune. Just play whatever Hayes make her once or knuckle dusters in game music. Knuckle dusters? What's that? Well I'm gonna let this there's nine tunes on this platoon, so I'm gonna let this play out. Um I'm not seeing knuckle dusters, so I don't know what that is. Is it on Deep Sid? Yeah, Platoon is on. Platoon is on right now. Check out the the thing over there. Should tell you. Not her bottom one level. Knuckle Buster. Okay. So. Oh yeah, I got it. Wow, okay, cool. Rob Hubbard, okay. There's lots of little tunes I've never never heard of before, lots of games I've never heard of before that he's done, so. It's like, is this really saving that much memory at this point? I guess it is. Um, I mean, that is, is smaller than this, right? So it is going to save stuff, and this is going to happen a lot, so. Um, Do that right in there. Yeah, okay. 
okay, that's that's fine. So it's gonna it's gonna save a, a few bytes here and there at the cost of a few more cycles. Um, but it is gonna save some. That's the thing. It's not it's not gonna not save any. It's gonna save some. Well, let's let's take a look, right? So um, instead of doing this, oops. Instead of doing this, which is um, we're looking at bytes here, so this is one uh, plus three, so it's four, six, uh, 12, 14, 17 bytes. So instead of 17 bytes, it's now using 513. So it's, it's saving, you know, is that right? Two, three, two, three, five, 10, 30. Yeah, so it's saving four bytes by uh, for each one of these. Um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is gonna it is gonna make a difference in the long run. Um, and also on the Y, it saves a lot less than it does on the on the X. On the X, it saves a bit more. So X has also been reduced down to thirteen bytes per macro. However, um, you can see here actually we're doing a lot more than that. So um, we were doing. Um, we're saving four plus five plus eight, so we're saving twelve bytes on an X position change. So, so it definitely makes a difference, I think. And on the on the positions where um, we just want to position an enemy and not actually move it in any direction, um, which I think is this one, um, then we're saving a lot. So I think this is going to save a lot. So we've gone down to six zero four D previously. So let's see what we are at now. Okay, platoon's finished. Let's do knuckle busters. Let's have a look. So six zero four D. Um, I made a mistake. Oh, because that should be. Says it hasn't changed. What? How has that not changed? Are we just calling it exactly the right number of times that it works out the same? Seems unlikely. <laughs> I did. Compile. Oh, the macros are staying. I'm I'm happy with the macros. I like being able to um, do things like this and not have to um, not have to kind of repeat the same pieces of code. I'm just trying to find a way to make them more efficient and not use as much memory. Um, but for some reason, this happens to have used exactly the same amount of memory as it was using before, which I find unusual. Um, I mean, maybe it's just a fluke. I, th I think it's just a fluke. I really do. Um, just make sure everything still works. It's kind of bizarre, that, though. Yeah, everything seems to be running the same. Yep, everything's... Everything's working. Uh, oh! I've just noticed... Too many enemies came out of there then. You see that? We've got five pipes. Oh, oh hang on, did... Hang on, hang on. I think we've got another problem here. So I do vaguely remember seeing this problem. Um, well, let's see how many enemies come out of these pipes. Okay. Oh no, it's fine. It must have just been when I absorbed one, another one came out of a pipe. Just because an enemy is... 
yeah, see, it's coming out of this one there. Just because an enemy is uh, on a platform doesn't mean that the pipe above it is, can't still be active. Although, I've just thought... I've just had a thought. I think... If I have power-ups, it's not going to count. When it when it starts working out the pipes, it's going to count only the number of enemies on screen, not the number of power-ups as well. So I think we might run into a problem here. So we should only ever see five things spawned on the screen at one time. In fact, technically we can only see five things because we're not using any um, sprite multiplexer. However, I reckon even though five things will spawn, we'll still see another pipe active. We'll still see something try and spawn out of one of the pipes. Because one of the things is a power-up. So, so here's the five things coming out of the pipes. So, so we're going to power up there. Uh, I... Yeah, I mean, that's happened because there should be another power up on the screen, not another enemy. Okay, so that's a bug we need to fix. So let's go and fix that one. Um, so this should be the order, right? So we should get two power ups and three enemies, but you could see four enemies and one power up there. And I think what's happening is, sin. <laughs> that was a fun sound. <laughs> That was a really fun sound, I like that. Do you know what? I'm going to give you that one for free. Nemesis the Warlock. Just because I'm struggling to find uh, another tune to play. Right, so what I think is happening is when the pipes spawn... Uh, who was that? Reggae Pirate. Thank you for the bits, Reggae Pirate. Seems good. Thank you. Oh, that seems like it... Yeah, okay. It's the uh, Seems Good emote. Which actually weirdly looks like somebody I work with. This is a bit strange. Well, a little bit, anyway. Uh, okay, so pipes come from the map data, so that's fine. Uh, I was just worried that I might have to include this in the map data, but it's fine, it's copied. Uh, here. So we check if there's less than five enemies, but all we're checking is the number of... Um, the number of enemies that are on the screen, not the number of power-ups that are on the screen. So we need to make sure that this value here is also... We also include the number of power-ups as they spawn. Um, yeah, maybe it doesn't look like that. Maybe maybe it's been so long since I've been to work that I forgot forgot what it looks like. Oh, none of the video chat. The, to be fair, I don't speak to him on video chat either, so... What are people? <laughs> Doing well with the wine tonight. Do you know what? Considering I'm not that keen on this wine, it's incredibly easy to drink. Which, I mean, should not be should not be the only reason to drink a wine. You should drink it because you like the taste, but the taste doesn't make me recoil, I guess, is the thing. And there are some there are some cheap wines that do make me recoil. So I think that's a good good sign for that wine. So if you do like French wines, that's probably quite a good French wine. Um, but I'm I'm not that keen on it, so I forgot what town you work in. <laughs> Oh, good one. Oh, oh, this is a different Airwolf camper. What the hell is that? Oh, Kappa's the, the boat, isn't it? Don't, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I shall put that one on next. I, I want to listen to this uh, 
Nemesis the Warlock stuff first. But yeah, I've, I've got it here. I mean, this is not the music from the game, so I'm hoping it's pretty good. Hey Warlock, welcome to the stream. Good morning. Nemesis the Warlock, yes. It's like you heard your name being called. Also, welcome, Mike. I, I didn't hear you actually come in. I saw your request, but um, wel welcome along to the stream, dude. Good to have you here. Summoned. <laughs> okay, so I need to work out if this value... This value needs to include the number of power-ups that spawn, but I have a funny feeling that that is only incremented. Um, it's, uh, it's definitely decremented when we kill an enemy and here is where it's incremented uh, now the reason why the reason why that value is not incremented for a power up is because power ups don't count towards completing the level so you can complete a level by killing all the enemies but not picking the power ups up and that's exactly what we want. So we actually need a power up total count here as well. Um, which I'm going to put here. Um, and then I'm going to put a label called skip here. Just make sure this jumps to that. Okay, now I need to actually put this in somewhere and I need to make sure it's reset to zero. So now that's going to increment if we grab a power up. Uh, it must be somewhere where it resets that to zero. Let's have a look in the final sense. Okay. So actually, enemy total count is not reset to zero at any point, and it really should be. Um, is it a player's thing? Let's have a look. Oh, so many variables now. Initialize. Okay, so this is where everything is set up. Players are set up. Yes, so I think here we should probably set these values as well. So. So they're now reset to zero every time we go in. So one thing I noticed though, it's actually this is the only place we check this value. So maybe, maybe this value is not entirely what I think it is. Because what is the condition for the door appearing? Um, where was that? That is door. Here we go. number of enemies check if the level is complete is the bar full okay so we're going to add the two values together and compare it to the number of... oh, actually it looks like we can just use that value then it looks like um, the, the behavior of that has changed over time I've been lurking as I get my feet going. So, I mean, I still haven't been out in a car or anything yet. I don't drive myself, so it's it's not something I'm I'm going to do in any hurry. But somebody on, on my um, work, one of my video chats, where we were having a little discussion before the meeting started, and someone was saying that they they had the weirdest sensation of uh, car sickness uh, because they'd not been in a car for three months, um, and they suddenly just kind of, kind of felt car sick when they'd never felt car sick before. Um, which I found quite interesting, which worries me a little bit because I get car sick anyway. So uh, probably because I don't drive and I don't spend enough time in cars, but I'm scared now that I'm going to get into an Uber and just throw up everywhere. All right, let's put this Airwolf tune on. So 
maybe we don't maybe we don't need this maybe we should just be implementing that anyway so let me put that there like that and see what happens so what I'm looking for is the right number of spawns to happen here what ubers are for throwing up in <laughs> I've never thrown up in an Uber. I've come very close to it. I went out once. Um, I'd been drinking heavily on the wine. I think I'd had like three bottles of wine or something. I was really, really drunk. Um, oh. Oh, no. I didn't like that, did it? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and I was, I was coming back in the Uber. And uh, the whole time in the Uber, I was like, I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. And we got to maybe within about 100 yards of the house. And I was like, just just stop now. Don't don't bother turning. Just stop here. Here is fine. And I got out of the car and I threw up straight on the ground right outside the door of the car. But not in the car. So I'm quite proud that I managed to hold it in that long. Um, but it was, it was not good. <laughs> I think that does need to be in there because I think that's been used somewhere else maybe. I don't know. Okay, let me just put the original behavior back and see because I think I've broken something there. Luna's oh it's in deep sit, is it? Awesome. Oh shit, yeah, and I, I forgot all about that. That means uh my dot cosmos stuff is gonna be in here as well. That was pretty good, that Airwolf. I like that. It's a good version. Uh, I'm not seeing it. Oh, there we go. Under your name as well. Why has he got... I, I, Okay, I don't understand that. It's got my name underneath. But your name... I don't understand that. It should just be your name. It shouldn't be my name in there. I, re I really like that bit. It's really good. I just want to make sure I'm not broken anything. I have a funny feeling I've broken some stuff here because it crashed where I wouldn't have expected it to crash. That's fine. Okay, it's just literally if I just increase it. Okay, so I do need that extra value. Fine. Like literally just put in name in. No, sorry. Put in that like that. It makes it fail. Which worries me because it it's there doesn't seem to be anything else that's using that value, so Ah, uh, Lassero's publisher. Ooh, okay. I don't exactly call myself a publisher, but... I actually found it by searching for steps rather than searching for Luna. See, I'm worried now because it seems to be not crashing. Yet it crashed when I did that before. Did I do some... did I miss something? It seems to be right there. Okay, um, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to leave it as it is, um, but I'm going to put a to-do note in here. And the reason I'm putting that there is so if I get a crash, I've got, a, I've got something to look for, uh, to look around this area. And I'm going to leave the comment and code in as well. Right, so I want to make sure that uh, if... 
Okay. If I grab something, so uh, if I grab a power up or I kill an enemy, that that's when the next pipe spawns and not before. Although the power ups isn't going to matter, but the enemies will. No, in fact, it's not going to matter either way. Oh no, it will. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, there you go. It's spawning out of there. However, that's not going to work with if I grab a power up. So. Let's do that again and grab a power up and we won't see a spawn and that's because if you grab a power up it doesn't decrease the enemy count i did know pictures shaved his beard i saw a picture uh yesterday i think it was um of it and he looks weird i can't i can't deal with it this looks strange okay so power ups don't make anything spawn from the pipe whereas they should, so that's one thing to do. And the other thing I need to do is just make sure that if I if I kill all the enemies, um, shit, I'm going to have to grab the parrot bar, well, just make sure it works first, I guess. And then try again without the... Okay, so that's good. So I just need to check it again, but this time leaving the power up on the screen. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to shave mine. I'm going to keep my. I do need to trim it though. It's been getting a bit itchy. It's grow. It's getting a bit wild. I need to. I need to give my my side of my head a bit of a shave and around here as well. I'm growing a neck beard, which I don't like. Okay, so I want to kill the enemies, but not the power ups. Uh, so as long as I leave one power up free be enough i'm gonna i'm actually gonna self-indulge and put my dot cosmos music on in a minute just because i like the fact that it's in in deep so i think it's kind of cool it's in deep sync it's in the high voltage sync collection yep yeah, that's working fine cool all right that's that bug fixed so that's good i'm not gonna shave ever no i mean the beard is relatively new it's not like i've had this for years and years and years i've probably had this two or three years at the most uh I, not a huge amount of time and i'd never had a beard before then um i'd always got to the point when i was growing one that it itched too much and i hated it but one, once i got past that i actually kind of liked it so um certainly people who've known me for a long time know me more without a beard than they do with a beard so Do you know the best thing about this tune is there are two versions of this tune there's this version and there's the new timeline ver the old timeline version nobody's got the old timeline version because you can't extract it from the game because it's not that straightforward knock the music up a little bit So it's the one piece of music I know from a game that doesn't exist in, in H HVSC. So um, if you can, I'm, I'm sure you could extract it from the game. Um, if you know what I'm doing to make that music, it is basically this piece of music. It's this Sid, but it does something to it. So I do have it in, I do have it in GT format. Yeah. But I, I mean, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm, I'm hooking into the, the play routine. Uh, and if it's in the old timeline, I'm overriding any rights to um, waveform or filters um, and just replacing them with, uh, I think it's Sawtooth or, or it's either Sawtooth or Sine Wave. So it just changes both channels to be the same, um, same wave, basically. And so it creates that kind of old effect without me actually having to, to write two pieces of music. Yeah, well, you have to be for 16K. You have to figure a way out of doing these things. And obviously writing two pieces of music would have taken me way over. As would um, having two sets of graphics as well, which is why I use Petsky.
Okay, that's that bug fixed. Okay, um... Um... Oh, and key changes as well is another way of saving, saving space. So you can use the same pattern and just do a key change, which is like two bytes or something like that. Um, all right. What are we going to do? Oh, enemy behaviors. Okay, so what time are we on? 20 past. Yeah, all right, let's do some enemy behaviors. Let me drop this music back to what we were on before. Uh, there he is. Um, yeah, so enemy behavior is what we need. So I think that bug was probably going to be a pain in the ass, so I'm glad we found that. Um... Oh my god, this is, um... She drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is as well, no way. I forgot who sings this. She drives me crazy. Is that Find Young Cannibals? Yeah. <laughs> Just as I said it as well. I used to love this song. I've only got one open, damn it. Right. Okay, so behavior wise, right, we've got. It's, it's a tricky one, so I think we should probably just work on one behavior at a time and just kind of enhance the previous behavior to do what we want it to do. So we've got a flying behavior. I think that can kind of stay the same. Um, this kind of flying source, I, I still don't know if I want to keep this. I'm really not that keen on it. Um, it doesn't look like the suite, which is what I wanted it to do, so... <clears throat> Agonite's in there. Floppy drive me crazy. Yeah, I can't believe I actually bought a USB floppy. Um, but I did. And I can't use the bloody thing, so... But I've got a USB floppy. If I ever need to write something or read something from a floppy, I've got the drive for it, so... <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna put the behaviour for this one in anyway, because I, I think... Even though I think this is probably wrong, the behavior is slightly different to this one. So this one um, just kind of bounces around the screen. The flying saucer really should just go left and right. It should just go all the way to the left of the screen until it hits something. Um, and then the other way as well. So it's kind of a simplified version of the flyer. Um, so let's, let's drop that in. So first of all, let's go and put it into the uh, spawn list. So it will spawn. Um, so let's keep that enemy there and let's change this one to a, to that, okay. So enemy number four is now, now that thing. Uh, likewise, we need to make sure that that sprite gets generated, which is generated from here. So, uh, God, I need to remember how these sprites work. So I'm going to write some information here about the indexing of that. So, these sprites start at C400, so that is uh, sprite one zero. so this is sprite one zero here. Uh, so we're using one three. so this is, I'm going to put a little note next to each of these. So this is the jelly bean guy, and it is a jelly bean, it's not a freaking sausage. Don't care what you guys say. So this is two, so this is 2B, 2B, no, hang on, that's not not at all is it there we go to B is this one so this is uh, 
flame boiled sweets. And then 2 2 is going to be the cola bar, which is this one here. Which means this one needs to be the flying saucer. Which is this one, and that starts at 1C. Cool, so now we've generated the, the, the absorb sprite for that. Um, when he's green, he looks like a pickle. Reminds me of Banana Man. <laughs> Penguin. Sadly. <laughs> oh god, okay. Oh good night, Sinla. I missed you, missed you disappearing. Probably gone now anyway, but uh good night anyway. I'm gonna take a short break in a minute. Um but when I come back we're gonna add this this saucer sprite. Now, obviously if it just moves left and right, it's gonna be really, really easy to predict. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it left and right, but there's gonna be a very small chance as it moves, it just randomly changes direction. So we'll do a random call, and if the if the number from zero to two five six is like one or zero, then we'll we'll have it um we'll, we'll have it just change direction. Why can't it teleport? I mean I guess it could, but we'd kinda of need another animation in there as well, I think, to to, to visualise the teleport. Otherwise it would just disappear and appear somewhere else. Um, which might look a bit odd. Um, but if it's, if it's, so what we've got to think about with these behaviors is they need to be somewhat predictable. So you need to know what's going on when you're moving around the level, you need to go, okay, yeah, I know, I know that this is going to walk this way and that way, but in combination, they need to be a little bit hectic. So if they were all just walkers or flyers. It would only really get hectic if you had tons of flyers on the screen. So, because they would all be bouncing around all over the place. So by having a flyer that's also a little bit random, it would mean you need less of them for it to be a bit hectic. For instance, if there's a flyer on the screen that's come out of here, right? You're not going to be able to hit it. Um, hang on, let me, let me start the level. Oops. So say, yeah, say you've got a flyer that... Oh! There is definitely something weird with that with that value. Let me just have a look again what it's doing here. Okay. There's something odd around this. I, I'm... I'm gonna I'm gonna put it back and see if we get the crash again, um, and just leave it like that for now. Uh, no, I don't think I did because I think the restore. Uh, I think I'm already dealing with that. Let me just check. Actually, no, I'm not. So maybe. Okay, I do need to set that up. That's a very good point, actually. We'll do that in a minute. Um, in fact, I'm going to do it now while I remember. So, RTI, NMI, IQ setup. Although, I'm just going to comment out. I just want to see if I'm doing something like that, because I just want to see if that produces the same result. But I'm, I'm a bit worried that that's been introduced now. Um, and the only thing I can think of that's changed has been their macros, but those macros shouldn't be, shouldn't be a problem. Um, there's no pulls and pushes in there, although they were taking the same amount of fucking memory off but. Okay, I can get to that screen, but did that get to that screen because I got to that screen or was it... Oh no, I know why it's crashing. It's crashing because it's spawning an enemy that doesn't exist, that's why. That's fine, that's absolutely fine. But 
good reminder to actually put that NMI function in. And I think that might be the wrong address. I think it might be FA and FB, not FC and FD. Let me check. This kind of reminds me of the sort of thing you'd hear in a like a Mario level or something. Yeah, FA and FB. It's not FC and FD. I thought so. The other one is the cold reset. But yeah, great, good, good call. Because I, I mean, it wasn't the reason why it crashed, but it does point out the fact that we don't have have that at all. Um, the reason why it's crashing is because we don't have the behavior in here. So, um, if I was to just put so that I, it will crash again, I guarantee it will crash again. Let me show you. And I have to do anything. I just have to wait for that enemy to spawn. As soon as it tries to pop that enemy out of the pipe, it will fail. It just so happens that it goes to this screen. But if I just add the, the new enemy behavior in here, um, in fact, let's just leave it as enemy three for now. So it just pops out exactly the same enemy. It doesn't really matter. And that crash will disappear. Sid's still a bit quiet. Okay. It's probably because I'm talking. I think the SID itself is quite quiet though. I'm not going to knock it up too much. Okay, you can see it's not crashed now. Which means I can restore that code as well because I think that is why that crash was happening. So I'm going to go back to here. Um, and put those back. Right, I'm going to go for a quick break. Uh, when I come back, we'll make enemy 04. Uh, which will be our flying saucer. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll take the, the flying bold sweet, uh, boiled sweet behavior uh, and we'll just alter it so instead of going up and down it just goes left and right. Then we'll add a little random check every frame just to see if it needs to change direction. I think that's probably the easiest way of doing it. So we'll, we'll take an existing behavior and just trim it down to something a bit more, um, a bit more suitable. Uh, I'm gonna grab some more wine because I'm out of wine as well. Um, this next wine I really like. It's the Ned from uh, New Zealand, but I'll show you when I come back anyway. So I'll be back in uh, about five minutes, guys. Be right back. <laughs> How can we think trying to duel with himself? Let's see if I missed anything. No, it just it goes into gamble mode at this time. Okay, right, so. What we need to do is we need to take the boiled sweet behavior. So this is behavior one, so it's this one here. I'm going to copy that entire behavior, and then we're going to work through it and, and turn it into a flying saucer behavior instead. So everything, move that down because don't care about that. That's non kind of enemy behavior stuff. And this is a saucer flyer. Um, flies left and right, changing direction at random. That's what we want. Okay. So that means we don't need dy. So we only need dx because we only care about a direction in the x, and we need to look at its animation. So this is what we've got at the moment which are these three frames here and then this one again in the middle so if that's 2b that would be 1b that would be 1c so it needs to be 1c 1d 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 right color wise its color is orange 8 uh, so So it picks a random direction to go for the direction X. Don't need to set a direction Y, so we don't need to do that. We do need to set a frame, okay. Collision points. Um, okay, so we could change these um, for the other enemy uh, to, to change kind of where it 
um, bounces off the floor by changing this value. For now, I'm just going to leave that there. Collision points Y we don't actually need. Um, Mm, or do we? We probably do want to keep that in there anyway, because I think it's going to be used as part of the part of the uh, call. So this is. Let's put some comments in here. So the first bit here is um, set the enemy frame. Okay, so <laughs> this is. I'm not a doctor. Oh, this is the same one. We had this before. But it's good anyway. I like it. So so this kind of behavior needs to stay the same. But then this makes me think maybe we should be turning this into a, a function. But you can see we've got all sorts of weird little properties here that we're calling. So maybe not ideal. Um, uh... Look at the enemy back rows. You might be able to save some space here as well. Ah, uh, no. See, we're doing we're doing this kind of pre-calculation here, so actually this is kind of necessary. Um, uh, yeah, it's kind of we kind of need that, unfortunately. Okay, that's fine. Um, and I'm just conscious that this is going to get repeated a lot, so might might readdress this at some point. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, I'm going to put that in places where I think we can reuse. So I'm going to go and put that in wherever I think it's it's happening. Uh, which is not happening in the walkers. I oh, know it is. It's kind of doing it here. So maybe maybe this in itself should be a macro. Um, I'll leave that in there. Let's see, there's another one there. So there's a lot of repeated code here <coughs> that we could optimize. They're probably never going to get touched, but. Um, if we are looking for extra bytes, then I'm going to look for this this phrase, and <clears throat> who knows? <coughs> oh, let's get some wine with me. Wait, where have I just done that then? Have I just done that in the wrong place? Oh no, that's an on spawn. This is just setting the DX. Yeah, so that's fine. Okay. So again, this is the uh, 2019 Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. It says it has aromas of gooseberry and white peach. Now, they always say peach with Chardonnay. Uh, uh, oh, actually, this is Sauvignon Blanc, so that's interesting. Refreshing notes of Café Lime. That's probably why that other one was weird. That was a Chardonnay, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. That's why I wasn't keen on it, probably. But yeah, peach. Café Lime, gooseberry and peach. Uh, but you see, this one actually tells you where it's from. It tells you whereabouts it is, which valleys it's from, whether it's close to the river or not. But I like this one. It's really nice. It's a lot more expensive, though. So it's like twice the price. It's about £30 a bottle, I think. <laughs> oh, God. This is the one, isn't it, as well? Oh no, okay. I mean, you've requested it, so I have to put it on there, right? But. Uh, thank you for the follow, Pixel Poldy.
Oh, that's it. That's as long as it is, and then it just repeats. But you did the music for Airwolf 2 as well, so let's play Airwolf 2 while we're at it. Definitely has a citrus flavour to it. I don't know if it's lime, but it definitely has a citrus fl flavour to it. This is just not Airwolf. Don't mean all right. <clears throat> uh, okay, let's go back to this. So. We've set the frame, now we need to set the colour. Uh, so the colour we need to um, set to orange, which is 8, that's nice and simple. Has it hit projectile? We do definitely need to uh, still um, record that. Um, <clears throat> X and Y, okay, so uh, do we actually need to grab this X value? I don't think we do. I think we can just load the accumulator with zero here because we're not moving in the X at all. Um, I'm going to go and check the update position function just to see if I actually do need to provide that or if I can pass a null in. I have a, I have a feeling I can pass a null into that function. Wallace in which case... Oh, Arkanoid. That's a good one. Oh, man. Arkanoid. So, I... Arkanoid was really the first kind of breakout game I played. I'd never really played the original breakout games. Um, and I think I got it on one of the Tato coin op collections or something. Um, but oh my god, I was, I was so hooked on that game. It was so simple, but I just played it to death. It was crazy. Yeah, so I don't think I need to do this. I think I can... I think I can do... Oh no, I do need to... Oh no, I can do this. Okay, I can pass in zero here like that. There we go. So it's going to save a tiny little bit of space. Not not a lot, but it will save a little bit. Um, okay, Y bounce. Uh, oops. Uh, so this is bouncing off the top and bottom of the screen. Um, so what is this doing? This is saying um, if we are less than the top of the screen or more than the bottom of the screen, do the Y bounce, which is this bit here. So we don't need to do either of those. Otherwise, get the Y position, uh, y, y direction, the Y delta. Uh, and add that. So this is actually dealing with all the kind of Y bound stuff. So actually we don't need to do any of that at all. I think we can get rid of that. So let's just get rid of that. So X bounce is the only thing we care about. Uh, this is going to stay the same. If we hit the edges of the screen, do we bounce? Yes, we do. Uh, and then we load the value from DX uh, and do the X bounce. I think this is pretty much all we need to do. Um, I would maybe argue that we need to make it kind of slow. So, I don't know what value it sets in DX. It looks like it just sets one in there anyway. Yeah, it does. Okay, so that's probably all right. Oh man, the Arkanoid thing. There's, there's still a little snippet of music from Arkanoid that gets me every time I hear it. Um, I think it's like the death music or the spawn music, and I, I just heard it randomly the other day, and it, I don't, I can't even remember where I heard it, but it, it didn't come with any context. It was just a little snippet of music, and I thought, oh my god, what is that from? And I realised it's the Arkanoid spawn music, and it just made me realise I played that game way too much. All right, let's let's put that Arkanoid on then. It's got twenty tunes in it. Wow.
and then to save space I've kind of converted them into subroutines but keeping the original uh, the original macro kind of name so that I can just call them as I can still call them as macros but they're basically calling subroutines um, for, for space saving purposes more than anything else. Okay, so I think I've got a behavior in now, so let's let's see if we can run this. Uh, so that's complaining about dy, which I've taken out here. So am I grabbing it somewhere else? Okay, I'm grabbing it here. Uh, okay, it, it should be... I should be grabbing x like that and y should be zero, so that should be null. And that should be zero. think. I might have to load while we zero. I just need to check how that macro works. So if they're both null, it does this. Otherwise, it goes into this routine. Um, Okay, they need to both be null, and I need to load Y with zero here. Okay, I think that's right. Let's give that a try. So first of all, I want to see how much extra memory that's used. So it's not added too much. It's added about... Uh, 112 bytes, give or take. So that's not too bad at all uh, for one entire behavior for... Oh man, I'm getting a lot of SID requests. Putting the SID requests down as... Uh... See, it's not that. I'll tell you which one it is in a minute. It is this one. That piece of music stuck in my head so much. Alright, I think it's all just incidental bits of music now, so let's, uh... uh... And this is just an insane piece of music. So if we can if we can limit behaviors to 256 bytes, right? We've got four in now, and we've still got enough room for well, 256 bytes is one of these. So if we said that was one on here, we'd still have 11 behaviors left, and we've only got six more enemies to do. So I think this is going to work out all right, and I think we might end up with just enough room to do 7K for the music. Well, actually, no, 7K is asking. So 7K would be, we'd have room for seven more if they were 256 bytes. But I reckon some of these behaviors are going to get quite complicated. So uh, it's going to be, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. Um, but we might be able to trim some other stuff down somewhere else as well. And bear in mind as well, we still need to do the intro. We've got no code for the intro yet. Uh, we still need to compress the map data, so we could end up with a bit of extra room at the end of the map data. Um, the splash screen, I, I don't care about. The splash screen is going to sit right here, right in this block of code here. Um, I'm going to use um, a bitmap mode, but I'm only going to use a small section of it. It's going to be loaded once at the very beginning of the game, and then it's going to be immediately overwritten. Uh, and it's not going to play again until you restart the game. So it's only ever going to play right at the beginning of the game. Um, and that way we can use this kind of warp, generated warp area. There's also uh, the area in the um, 0400 area, which we could use. 
and there's also 0200 to 0300 which we can kind of just about insert some stuff into if we need to but inserting stuff in there complicates things when it comes to things like tape loaders and stuff um, but that we should be able to get around that with uh, Exomizer anyway so oh and just to point out as well that this game um, so I've been speaking to uh, Jamie from uh, Bitmap Soft he's really really interested in publishing this game he really really wants to get this game published and I've, I've agreed with him that we'll we'll publish it with him um, so while the game will be free, we're not going to charge for this game. It is going to be on itch.io. It's going to be free. It's a com collaborative effort. Everybody's in, uh, in, been uh, instrumental in getting this game out. So there, there's absolutely no part um, that I want to um, to, to make. Uh, I don't want the downloadable part. I don't, I don't want the, the downloadable D64, PRG, whatever it's going to be, to be uh, to cost money. It's going to be free. Um, which does mean it's going to be all over CSDB, but whatever. It doesn't. I'm, I'm not too fussed about that. Um, however, for physical release, I would like to make this a physical release. I think it deserves a physical release. We've spent enough time on it. Um, I've talked about um, a cartridge version, um, which would be on GMod, so it would be. I mean, it's a little bit excessive for Gmod, but maybe I can add some extra features for Gmod cartridge, like a, a nice intro and um, a nice intro, and uh, maybe some high score saving and stuff like that. But um, uh, but there will be there will be a physical release. There, there will definitely be a, a cartridge and a tape. I don't know about disc, um, and I'm going to do exactly what I've done with the patron. Um, so many people have contributed to this it would be impossible for me to um to share out any profit that comes from this and i i mean there's not going to be a lot of profit right it's a commodore 64 game it's not like it's going to make thousands of pounds or anything but um rather than try and share out the few hundred that it would be against every single person that's in the um uh, that, that's contributed to this what i will do instead is any money i do get from it uh, and I intend on basically pricing it at a level that basically gives me all gives us almost no profit from it. Keep it cheap, just so there's a physical version, so you can get a cartridge as cheap as possible, so you can get a tape version as cheap as possible. But any money that we do get will go straight into the giveaways as well. Uh, <clears throat> and yeah, well, I'll probably I'll speak with uh, I'll speak with the publishers about getting a few extra copies, and we'll do a giveaway as well. Uh, same thing, so. Uh, yeah, there's uh, the, the itch.io download is going to be free. Um, the, there's no point in putting a charge on it because the code is available for free anyway. So it it really doesn't it really doesn't matter if I if I kind of make it um, pay. The fact that the code is there, they'll just release preview versions of it. Um, uh, it I mean, it's going to be cracked. It's going to be on CSDB. So. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of at, well, I wouldn't say I'm at peace with that, but um, I've accepted that that's going to be the case. Um, but I would like to see a physical version. I think it deserves a physical version. Um, so, you know. But I don't want, I don't want the physical version to be something that I make money off because a, there's not going to be a lot of money, and b, I don't think it's fair anyway because everybody's, everybody's contributed to this. Right, so we're looking for hopefully a new behaviour now. There we go. Okay, so interestingly, the behaviour is such that it collides with the player um, immediately. But I mean, this again would come down to player spawn positions, right? So you wouldn't have a player spawn in. Here, for instance, because of where the pipe is, you'd probably have the player spawn in here, maybe, or or here and here. I don't know, so we need to we need to think about that. But it is it is moving, it's moving backwards and forwards. That's good. So let's let's try. Uh... Oh, okay. So there there is still a bug around that, and I think this is 
this is to do with this this bit here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this back in and I'm gonna try again. You can fix that bug too. It's your B button broken. Um, this should work in NTSC actually. Let's 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 try that in a second. Actually, uh, there's no reason it shouldn't work in NTSC. It's definitely been we've definitely thought about it as we've done stuff. So okay, so the absorb works for it. That's good. But everything seems to be ah oh, damn it. There we go. Everything seems to be working okay for this. door opens. Okay, so let me just revert that change and see. So I, I think this for some reason is, is causing an issue. Um, if I can at least verify that, then I know that's something. I'm not going to do it now because it's one o'clock and I'm actually feeling a bit dizzy from the wine now. So that'll be the first thing we do on the next, next thing. But I, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is going to work on NTSC, but we'll give it a try anyway. Annoyingly, the bug hasn't happened in the same way this time. Oh, I think it's time for the next. Okay, that didn't. It didn't bug out at all. There. Let me try it again. In fact, let me switch it into NTSC. Let's see what the hell happens. Because one of the things I was trying really hard to do was to make sure that the uh, transition worked in NTSC. <sighs> I haven't tried it since, so... Oh, actually, it looks... Ah, okay. So we've got some issues with the title card. I think that's fairly fixable. I think this is just to, to do with where the lines are happening. Okay, that's all right. But the game itself should work. Yeah, I mean, it's faster, but it does work. Yeah, no problems with that at all. Okay, so there's a few issues we need to we need to fix, but I, I think there, there's nothing impossible in there at all. Um, I, yeah, actually, it does feel really good. <laughs> it does feel really good at this speed. Which is kind of annoying, and, uh, and you'll find this with um, with NTSC versions of C64 games is when they do just speed things up by 70%, they do feel a lot better. In a lot of in a lot of cases, they feel a lot better. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's issues around that. We definitely need to work that out. So this will just be down to the timing. So we're doing some very precise timing stuff to get this to work. Um, we just need to make sure that if it's NTSC. We change the timings ever so slightly, which we can have in a little kind of bootstrap piece of code, which just writes the right values into into memory. Um, it's not an ideal way. To... Oh, something has been eating the hell out of me because I've got two bites on my hand. I've been itching my hand all day, and I've been wondering why. And now I can very clearly see two bites on my hand. Oh damn it! What's been eating me? Anyway, we'll we'll worry about that later. I'm I I'm pleased that it works. That's the thing. We're not we're not getting any uh, in-game kind of glitches. We're only getting glitches in the um, in the in the tight kind of timings, but that's fine. I've only just changed them though as well. I wonder I wonder if I've done something in my. I'm wondering if there's something here as well that maybe. Hmm, never mind. Put your hand through the debugger. <laughs> ah, yeah, something has bit the shit out of me though. Hmm. All right, let's do uh, let's do the new new tune. So, what, what was this one? Ultimum Thunderblade. What the hell is that?
So I'm considering writing uh, a little uh, overlay plugin. Uh, well, that's not it, is it? Surely. Oh, yeah, it is Star A Digitama. Okay. This is a hundred percent digital samples. But that one's come up recently, which is why I'm thinking there's something in here. Because that wasn't there before. Oh God. Whatever it is, it's annoying. Okay, where we at? <clears throat> I guess Hayes has fallen asleep because he's not, he's not tried to spam text-to-speech or anything for a while, so... Oh, it's a sword raid! Thanks for the raid, Zork. Welcome to the stream, dude. And well, th thank you for the raid. Uh, welcome everybody that's come along with uh, come along with Zork. And uh, Hayes has just pointed out that he's not asleep. He's working on Wilf, and he's done so by once again abusing my. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep using your channel points. Every time you do that, I'm gonna mark it as complete. So you've just cost. It's just cost you 400 channel points to tell me that. <laughs> um. Uh, duh, duh, duh. yeah, welcome along, guys. Uh, what have you been doing tonight, Zork? You've been doing uh, 6502, or you've been working on uh, some of the other stuff. I know you've been doing some uh, last time I saw you were doing some movie, um, movie stuff, uh, like movie, uh, movie night stuff. So, yeah, what have, what have you been working on tonight? All right, let's put another tune on as well. I reduced the price of my um, my Sid tune request thing and now it's gone kind of mad everybody's doing it all the time now um that's a good shit i mean we must hear this every other week but this is good oh you're playing red oh you were playing games today okay cool what were you playing so we're going to play some uh jaguar in about an hour and a half maybe, well no maybe about an hour i think about two o'clock uk time Oh, the longest journey. I know that I, I, I need to look this up, but I, I think if it's what I think it is, it's a really good game. Yes, it's the old um, Funcom game. Yes, I remember it. It's like a really weird um, like adventure game, isn't it? By the guys that did um, Anarchy Online and um, uh, Conan. The MMOs, but yeah, they did. They did. They did a couple actually. I think it's one. It's, this is one of a couple that they did. Um, and I remember playing this. It's a really, really good game. Actually, it really, it's a beautifully drawn game as well. Um, yeah, yeah. It was. It was impressive. Oh, they released it on iOS as well. Wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Series. There you go. I knew they'd done a couple. Uh, Dreamfall, that was the original one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I remember it. It was, it was, it was pretty good. I, I can't remember when I played on it. It probably was a PC actually, but it was pretty decent. Um, yeah, so tonight we're going to play on the Jaguar, which I've got there, which I do need to set up at some point, which I'll do on my on my next break. Um, and we're going to play. Uh, from the we're gonna play flashback so just check if you can actually see that on the camera it's, I've not got my thing up there you go we're gonna play flashback which I played on I think I played it on both the Mega Drive and the SNES um, but I've never played it on the the Jaguar and apparently it's a very very good version on the Jaguar so we'll give it a try um, but looking forward to that I've not tried this out yet I'm hoping it works 
Uh, I realized I bought this from the US, so I'm hoping there isn't any kind of region lock on it. I don't think there is on the Jaguar, um, so I think it will just be fine. Uh, but yeah, looking looking forward to it. Oops. Oh, another Sid request as well. Okay, so um, what were we doing? We were looking to see which of these is going to... Oh, it's that little... Yeah, we, we had a crash and I wanted to know what that crash was about, so... I'm going to see if I could grab this guy up here, so... I think we need to think about how these things spawn, because there are certain places where if you just stand still... I mean, I guess that's the thing, isn't it? If you stand still after you spawn, then you deserve to die. You you have an invulnerability, a few seconds of invulnerability, so... Um, Yeah. Oh yeah, so so just a reminder, if you are a regular on the channel and you do have um, points, you'll be able to enter a giveaway next week. It's open to everybody. You can join the channel um, at half nine. I've calculated a, it is possible to join the channel at half nine and win the giveaway. Um, but it, it will require some dedication to do that. You'll have to join, sub, follow, be active for the entire time. Um, and then you can you can enter the giveaway. We'll be giving away Sam's Journey on the C64, Kobo 64 on the C. These are all C64 games. So Sam's Journey on cartridge, Kobo 64 on cartridge, uh, Million Molly on tape, and uh, what's the last one? Uh, oh, Luma, my game. <laughs> Forgot my own game. Uh, we'll be giving away Luma on tape as well. And the giveaway is going to be next at this time next Saturday, pretty much midnight next Saturday. Um, so we will, I will open the ticket purchase at half nine. It will cost you 2000 channel points, uh, to buy a ticket. You can buy up to three tickets, um, which is I, the reason I'm allowing you to buy three tickets is it gives the regulars, um, more of a chance of winning, which I think is fair. Um, otherwise you're going to get people who see the giveaway, join, do the bare minimum to get, get it. So if, you, if you've never been on the channel before and you join next Saturday at half nine, you'll be able to buy one ticket if you do everything correctly. Um, however, those who've been here around uh, and been on the stream long enough should be able to buy three tickets, which will cost you about 6,000 channel points. Uh, and then we'll randomly pick um, a winner at midnight and then I will ship those things to you as soon as uh, you send me a address. There will be some rules around it as well. So, for instance, you will have to be active at midnight in order to receive the the the, um, the prize. Uh, I will I will as soon as I announce the winner, there'll be there'll be a f between five and ten minutes. I've not worked out yet. There'll be a, a five or ten minute window in which you can reply to me through uh, Twitch DMs uh, to confirm that you want to receive the prize. And if you don't. Re if you don't reply within that time, then uh, the the draw will be done again. It's just to make it fair, so that people don't just join and then um, um, basically go AFK. So you need to kind of be active at that time. So, um, but you can buy the tickets anytime up to the the closing. Uh, and yeah, three tickets is is going to be the maximum of thing. I mean, it gives you three times the chance of anybody else of of a non kind of regular to to win. So I, I think that's kind of fair. So that means if three regulars and one non-regular plays, the non-regular has only got uh, a 10% chance of winning, whereas the others have got a um, 30% uh, chance of winning. So yeah, that would that would be fair, I think. So um, I will announce it on Twitter during the week. As soon as the prizes come in, I'm going to take a take a, a photo of it, get them on. Um, uh, get them onto Twitter and um, and then do an announcement. Uh, note the prizes are going to be all for one person, so you will be the proud owner of two new cartridge games and two new tape games as well. Winner takes all, yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try and do this this giveaway at least once a month, I think. Um, as I say, it's all funded by the Patreon stuff, so. Um, whenever Patreon pays out, I will go and buy some stuff 
uh, and add it to the, the prize pool for the next month as well. Okay, so we've got another SID request. Let's do this one. Uh, the big deal. Okay, let's see what this is. Uh, the big deal. Uh, Jerome, Red Kimmel Jerome. Please be more than this. Okay. <laughs> I was a bit worried then. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Uncle Bingo. Thank you for the follow, Not a Magnet. And thanks, Warlock, for pointing that out to me. I don't know why I didn't hear that in my in my earphone. Maybe I've disconnected or something. Just in case. There you go. Yeah, so I worked out that to get 2,000 points, you would have to join the stream at half past nine. You would immediately have to subscribe, you would have to follow, and then you would have to hit the little kind of, um, the little button in the bottom of the chat that's like redeem, redeem, redeem. If you did that from half nine, you could just about buy one ticket. Um, which is why, which is why I've kind of set it at 2000. I think I, I, I want to encourage new people to join in, uh, but I don't want to make it too easy for them to do that. So. Man, something has been eating me. I've just another one's popped up in my little finger now. There's three on this hand now. This is some up here. Something's eating me, and I don't like it. <clears throat> um. But yeah, I mean, it's it's. I, I've had a thought about it, so. Um, I was originally going to do it with, um, oh yeah, it could be actually, because I go and smoke on my balcony, so maybe there's a, like a, oh yeah, that's a good point. Oh god, now you've made me paranoid about the balcony. Or maybe it's a reaction to the French wine. <laughs> Let's go with that, I like that. Alright, um, I think what we was doing. Let's get some more wine in me. All right, we were doing the fly animation, so I'm kind of happy with the way the flying saucer works. Um, I, I'm not that happy with the flying saucer sprite itself. I think we should probably change that at some point, but for now it can be fine. But this is New Zealand wine, but the last one was... Uh, the, the, so the bottle I finished earlier was the, uh, the Chardonnay. Maybe it's just Chardonnay. Um, I do prefer Sauvignon Blanc, so maybe it's just Sa Chardonnay. But I'd like to think maybe it is something to do with the uh, the wine. I bet it's not though. I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of French wine. I know that's sacrilege because that's like where you know where the best wine in the world is supposedly from. But it's. I'm sorry. I just don't like French wine. So. All right, right, so what I want to add into this now is a little bit of random behavior. So we've got this uh, little bit here. So do we do an X bounce? Okay, this is where we do the calculations to see if we do the X bounce. Um, so there's all of this, no X bounce. Uh, so what I want to do is the very first thing before any of this happens is I just want to do a check. I just want to see um, if I do a random number, And that number is, let's say, less than two. Uh, are you seriously giving me a listen for wine wine tips? Okay, I'm going to read this anyway. A very, very crisp white tonight. Uh, Tesco owned brand lemonade. <laughs> Most of the French grapes were destroyed in World Tender to re -import. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's it's fine. I I actually I kind of like your listens anyway because they're either they're one of two things. They're either stuff I've already done because you're lagging so much that it's um, that you know you don't you don't realize. Actually, it's three things. Uh, it's it's either stuff I've already done because you're lagging so much. It's um, it's something important, but you've given me less than three seconds to read the chat. <laughs> which I find quite funny. 
Um, or, or now the new one is that now you're giving me wine tips. But that's a, that's a good one. I didn't know that. So I've been watching um, the Oz and James stuff that Jace sent to me, um, which is James May and um, I can't remember his name now. The, the wine the wine critic called some Oz or Oz something. Um, and it's it's really good actually. It's been quite interesting. But I kind of I'm kind of like James May with wine. I like it because it tastes nice. I do I do like some of the things about it and I, I do know what I like and I don't like um, <laughs> James May and the one may not yeah exactly um, and I kind of agree with him that the the new, world, the new world wines taste a lot nicer than the old world wines, the old world wines are too complicated, they're too complex, they've got lots of crazy flavours in them and they like, kind of, they last on your palate for ages whereas the new world wines they're just to the point. You, you drink it, the flavour is what you get, and that's it. It doesn't have a lasting flavour or anything. It's just it's just straightforward. And some of it's really nice. Like, the, this Ned stuff is really good. Somebody recommend I should try the Reds um, from these guys as well. So I'm going to try out the Pinot Noir from them. Um, I've got to say, old, old world Reds, I, I prefer to new world Reds, so... We shall see how that goes. Okay, this is on repeat. I'm going to change that tune. Oh, we know the gay. Wow, who recommended that? Greg Twee. Thank you for that. That's a know the gay. Wasn't that um, Electric Light Orchestra? I'm sure, it was. Yeah, it was. It wasn't ELO who did that. Yeah, Chili Reds are good. Chili Merlots are really, really nice. Um. Uh, I, I like I like Chile for the Merlot. I like um, Spain for the Rioja. Obviously, I mean, nowhere else can do a Rioja because it's Rioja. Um, but any kind of Tempranillo grape is better than in in um, in Spain anyway. I think it's something to do with the the kind of the, the kind of dry kind of barren landscapes that they grow the grapes on in in Spain. There we go. Not a fan of Shiraz at all. Never really liked Shiraz. OMD, that's it. Orchestral when he was in the dark. Yes, that's right. I know I get mixed up between ELO and OMD all the time, and I know I shouldn't. It's just because I use acronyms for their names. Yeah, it's it's about. Um, isn't Enola Gay the name of? Uh, wasn't it the name of a bomber? I think in World War Two. Um, yeah, the play, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I thought it was something like that. Yeah, the bomber. <laughs> yeah. I knew I knew it was something like that. I'm not a big history buff, so I'm not very good with that sort of stuff. My brain's full of six five oh two. I don't have room for all the uh all the <laughs> no, the gate drop little boy for the Japanese to enjoy. <laughs> jo boom boom on Dorito King. Pixel Drama Club, seriously, man. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna check if the uh, sorry I, I need to, I need to get off that topic because it's not a good topic. Uh, okay, we're gonna check a random number if the random number is zero or one, so that gives us a one in hundred and twenty eight chance. So that should be a roughly once every two and a half seconds or so um, that it will change direction. So um, if it's um, do X bounce. Okay, so. If that value is less than this, so we do C. Now, again, I will I will explain why I know that this is less than and, and that is more than. Uh, let me just put it in first. So the the way I remember this is if you take um, so when you do less than and more than, the the first thing you tend to do when you're learning six five zero two is use branches minus and branches branches plus because you want to know I'm comparing it to this. Is it less than this or is it more than that? And this feels like the right thing to do, but this breaks when you start using values that are that are further away than 128. So you have to use branch of carry clear and branch of carry set. It's just a rule you need to learn, and you need to kind of remember that you know when you want to do less than and greater than, do not use minus and plus. Use carry flag, and the way to remember which is which is if you take the carry set and uh, sorry carry clear and the carry set 
then carry clear in alphabetically is less than carry set. So when you want to do less than, you use branch of carry clear. And if you want to do more than, you use branch of carry set. So it's the easiest way to remember. And if you were to put these two instructions alphabetically, then this one would be before this one. Or in terms of an index, it would be less than this one. So that's how you remember it. And the only other thing to remember is that it's, it's less than or greater than and equal to. There's no such thing as more than. It has to be greater than or equal to. Um, that just comes with practice. You will, you will just remember that over and over again. There's lots of little things like that you can remember for, for things. You just kind of learn them after. It's like soccer tower. I mean, that's that's the one thing, you know, you learn that at school, don't you? The soccer tower. And you, I mean, I remember it. There was a fictional Greek philosopher called soccer tower. I mean, there isn't, but it's easy to remember as a Greek thing. And then that lets you remember that this is trigonometry and that these are all S equals something over equals something over equals something over and you just learn how to do those and then as long as you know what the opposite the adjacent and the hypotenuse is on a triangle you, you can understand what sine of cos is um and there's also equivalencies as well but i'm not going to go into that now i learned Socrates, yeah so i would learned it as a greek greek an ancient greek mathematician or something like that a fictional ancient greek mathematician um but it's a really effective way of, of remembering it. So, and it is, the other one is, of course, is uh, bod mass as well, um, which you use for learning um, the order of things. So, so it's uh, if I remember right, it's brackets, brackets, ordinance. So, like to the power of two or whatever, like that. I think it is uh, division, uh, multiplication, addition and subtraction so that's the order you do things when you see things in it or bid mass yeah what's the i in bid mass is that um i mean it's going to be index or something isn't it i don't know indices yeah but yeah i mean that's you know you learn you learn these things and it's surprising how much they actually help um they do help a lot. Yeah, ordinance, I think they call it in mathematics, which basically means powers or square roots. Um, Roy G. Biv, yeah, that's another one, exactly, yeah. Um, or, um, oh, God, what is it? Uh, my, my very eccentric mother, my very eccentric mother sometimes... Sometimes oh, I can't remember it. There's one for remembering the planets as well, so it obviously hasn't worked because I don't remember it. Um, but the, there's there's one for remembering the order of the planet. I mean, I just know the order of the planets, so it doesn't matter anymore. But um, we got taught one at school about your mother. So uh, my my very my very eccentric mother sometimes something I can't remember what it was, but uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and of course, that's all been all been destroyed now because Pluto t technically isn't a planet anymore. So whatever. All right. Okay. So hopefully this should now make that um, that that uh, flying saucer move kind of a little bit random. What I'd really like to do next is one of the jumping ones. I, I think the simplest one is going to be a, a, an enemy that tries to kind of get itself at the same level as a player. Um, so we'll probably go for that one next. So we've only, I'm going to only do about another half an hour. Um, so I'm going to go for a smoke in a minute. And then I'm probably... I'll, I'll set up the Jaguar in the, at 2 o'clock-ish. And then probably go for a quick smoke and then do some stuff. So, Okay, this isn't a good example because it's... It's bouncing between a very, very short distance. But hopefully it will just change direction at some point. It doesn't look like it is. Oh, there you go. You see it? Okay, so let's let's do this on a bigger stage. Hopefully it comes out of the right place. Let me set up another SID tune before I go for a smoke. Acmafin, another, another airwolf theme, okay. <laughs> Take Acmafin. Have I got to play airwolf in August? Is this is this a thing now? 
My name isn't on any list or anything to say I have to play it, so... I'm thinking maybe I don't. Uh, I'm not seeing it in the list, though. Let me type that guy's name in instead. Also, the 64-bit hype is stupid because it is not 64-bit. And I, I hate the fact that they tried to market it as 64-bit because it's really not. It just happens to have two 32-bit processors in it. Uh, and so they weirdly decided that that meant that they could just add them together and it would be 64-bit. In which case, you know, my... My C64 is actually, so what's the VIC-2 is probably 8-bit, the 6510 is 8-bit, uh, the SID, well, I mean, it accepts 8-bit values for things, so that's 8-bit as well. Um, the memory itself is 8-bit, and in my C64 red bin, I oh know they're all 1-bit chips anyway, so that doesn't matter. So, okay, so my, and the color RAM is 4-bit, so my C64 is about 20, 28-bit or something like that, so, you know. Yeah, marketing, exactly. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to stick the Airwolf theme on. Uh, I'm going to go for a smoke. When I come back, we'll check that that uh, Flying Saucer is kind of changing direction a little bit. Um, and then I think for the last half an hour, we'll try and squeeze one more quick behaviour, or at least start of a behaviour, um, and see how it goes. The temperature is getting really hot in here, so I'm going to turn my aircon on as well while I go. Alright, so... Uh, what was your request, Prayer 7? I didn't see a Prayer 7 request, actually. I'm down to just one request, which is another Airwolf tune, which I'm going to put on in a second. If you um, just send a message to say what it was and I'll, I'll put it on. I'm sure I've missed it by some re for some reason. All right, uh, back in five minutes, guys. Be right back. Mm -hmm. 